<clears throat> Church on the Wire is live. Church on the Wire is live. And be thou my vision, the Lord of my heart. Oh, my heart. Hey, Shandy and Michael. Hello, friends. Yes, much better, Chris. I also, I also took a very large nap today, <clears throat> which helped replenish. Um, flooring is beautiful. It's a it's a brutal job, bro. It's a brutal. <laughs> so it uh, takes Paps a little bit longer to recover these days, but we recovered and. Um, here we are. Chris, it sounds like Logan got a, a mighty um, powerful touch from God. I, what I can see from last night. We've been talking about it a little bit here and there, but... Um, he seemed to really open up to it last about it last night. So I would say, you know, we'll have to see how it goes. But from what I could gather from it, it, it looked quite um, legitimate to me. Yes, it is. There's Sean. Oh, I just sent you a text, Sean. Disregard. Disregard, friend. <laughs> hey, Selena. I just, man, I've been thinking about you today, sis. I'm praying for you today. And here you are. Don't make me cry. Don't make me cry. Praise God, Sean. John, you make me smile, friend. <laughs> you make me smile. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sean's getting fired up over there in England, Chris. You're not far behind, friend. You're not far behind. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hey, Bo. Good day. Good day, Bo. Oh, okay, Selena. That must have been why I was praying for you today. I 
I hear him, I hear him coming. As soon as some folks get in here, Selena, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to muster up a prayer circle for you, okay? You going to be here for a little bit? Listen, I got a word from the Lord. Very important one. And uh, the Lord told me this. I'm not going to say it yet. I'm excited, Selena, for what God told me today. I'm very excited. Hey, Matthew. Oh, how gracious is this God. Mm -mm -mm. For such a worm as I. Man, oh man. Stick around, Bo. God's going to do a work in you tonight, friend. Selena Houston. What a word, sis. It just goes right along with what God gave me today. Bless your heart. Oh, God. Move in this room, Holy Spirit. Move in this room among these beautiful people, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, how you love them. Hallelujah. Hey, Judy. Judy, I want to tell you personally. I know I sent you a text, but... Your video moved me tremendously today, sis. Moved my heart. Affected me deeply. What you sent me. Um, you just don't know how much that did for me, sis. Bless your heart. Hey, Vanessa. That's right, Selena. It's right there in black and white, isn't it? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I know you did, Judy. No, no, you did. I could feel it, sis. I could feel it. <clears throat> Michael, Michael J. Paul, I love you, friend. Hallelujah. 
absolutely, Sean. Actually, Sean sent me one earlier today, and that just really started my day. It's the first thing I saw when I opened up my eyes with that verse that Sean sent me. Man, it's a powerful verse. I hope that's the one he's going to show. If not, I'm going to show it here in a little bit anyway. So. <clears throat> Chris Reagan. Chris Reagan, I don't know if you've ever missed one broadcast, have you? I don't think you've ever I don't think you've ever missed one. That's right, Selena, isn't that beautiful? You know what? That's why I like Courtney's song so much when it says that about uh, apart from me. You know, apart from you, I stand ashamed. I love that part. No defense. Apart from you, I stand ashamed. So Selena's going to get preachy in here tonight. I like it. Yeah, Chris, yeah, he might have missed one or two when they were really late. Yeah. There ain't been very many of them. Her second song is not on her, um, not on the Restoring Prodigals. I wish she would put it on that one. It's on the other one, on her other channel. It's proper. <laughs> oh, Lord. You know what? I'll probably play that song. I'll play that song, Shandy. I can find it on my history. I love Courtney stuff. Oh, Kenny, you listen to a lot of music. And Nathan. And Taz. There it is. Thank you. 
All right, I'm going to check it, Sean. I'll look it up on the... That's definitely Jeremiah, the one you're, you sent me earlier, bro. appreciate her very much don't get to see her often but she uh, tell you she's uh, much of the contribution through this uh, to anything God does in here uh, I know that I just didn't have that sense I just know that well Shandy believe it or not I'm going to tell you that's a good thing I'm going to tell you that's a good thing. The most most Christians are going to tell you that's not a good thing, but I'm going to tell you that's a good thing because you're not worthy. Let me see. See, the devil oversteps himself, and he uh, he makes you think. He tells you the truth sometimes. Like that right there, that's the truth. He'll come in your ear and tell you you're not worthy to receive God's forgiveness. And you know what you tell him? You say, that's absolutely right. Thank you for telling me the truth. Because you aren't worthy. And the reason you're not worthy is because you're a sinner and a rebel. Right? That's why you need Jesus. So that's absolutely good. That's good, Shandy. That means you're under conviction. You know, I've realized that so many Christians do not want life-changing God. They want a God they can add to their lives. and stay. That's right, Selena. Just spot on, sis. I call it the life enhancement drug called Jesus. The life enhancement drug. It's one thing to, to want God for your utility, that you can use him at your disposal. It's another thing to want God for God. 
what I'm going to talk about tonight. So, Lena, you're 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 hearing um, right alongside of this. I mean, uh, I I can see that. I sure can, Cindy. What's up, sis? Hang out, sis. I got a word from the Lord. To have the gospel backwards. Yeah, that's that's good. I can do that, Michael. Well, I'll I'll just start out with with what uh, can somebody uh, message Courtney Cannon, let her know we're up. Someone do that. So what what uh, Michael was referring to there, the gospel backwards. One day I was I was praying and uh, the Holy Spirit came to me very strong and said these words to me, Kenny. You have to start preaching the gospel from God to man and stop preaching it from man to God. This has been 20 some years ago. And I, at the time he said it, I didn't, I did not understand what he was saying. And that's what he'll do a lot of times. He'll give you a phrase and then he'll leave you with it. And you chew on it and you marinades in you and, and then he begins to illuminate it to you. That's wonderful when he does that. And so he began to show me that, that we have, we have, we have turned it into an introverted gospel, meaning a gospel that has been solely for the needs of man. That we preach Jesus. This is, this is how I, I put it. We preach Jesus that he's a stray dog on the back porch here. Somebody's dropped him off along the road and he needs a place to stay. Right. And he's scratching on the door. He's got the mange. He hasn't been fed for a while. Right. Will you receive him and let him in? And see, we, we, we make it look as though God is, is just standing there shivering in the cold, waiting on your, your arrogant lifestyle to deflate long enough for him to be allowed to come in. And that is so against the gospel. We've got it turned around. Instead of preaching from God to man, instead of saying, you're in, you're in trouble. You're, you're, you're serving the devil. You're walking in your own heart, the imaginations of your own heart. You're a God opposer. You are, you are, a, you are a, a transgressor of his laws. Instead of preaching the gospel in such a way that brings the need into the heart of man, we are preaching the gospel from the wants of man. And what we have done, we've turned it introverted and, and made, it, made it a novelty instead of a necessity so now we just we walk around with in these in these sneaky little forms called witnessing and we try to slip in a little word here and slip in a little word there but i'm telling you those boys stood on the banks of the rivers and they yelled it repent you're in trouble his fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor see, this message has got to come back see to bring conviction like Shandy's having right now. Shandy's having conviction right now. And she feels unworthy. But you know what the modern church would tell her? You know what they would tell her? They would start giving her scriptures. That, that would pacify that. And tell her. Oh well that's just the devil telling you that. And you know it's. And it is. But he's telling you the truth. See he's trying to get the reverse effect. He's trying to get the effect. He's trying to get this effect. Well, gee whiz, it ain't no use to me seeking God because I'm, I'm, I'm not worthy of it. That's right. That's why you seek God. Because you're not worthy of it. You only have one card. It's the mercy card. The mercy card. We have it all backwards. We think that God owes us something. And we preach the gospel from the, from the standpoint of entitlement. See, here's the thing. For God so loved the world that he gave. You didn't love God, and I didn't love God. We were God haters. But he loved his creature, didn't he? 
even though his creature was opposed to him and had walked away from him. So God gave, because man couldn't. For God so loved that he gave, you see. See, it's all in how you say things. For God so loved the world that he gave. No, for God so loved the world that he gave. You see it? Changes it, doesn't it? Thank you, Lord. Right, right. That's entitlement. See, that's 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 the entitlement mindset that's crept into the church. That's why the Bible says, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Meaning, though what that means is now, that you have to meet the criteria of that. And to have the mercy of God bestowed upon you, you have to come in utter shamefulness, shamefacedness, nakedness, so to speak. You know, and, and that, that's why he says, buy me clothes, raiment, that your nakedness may not appear. Meaning, I'm going to give you my righteousness, but you have to acknowledge your own doesn't exist. See, here's the problem. Here's the battle that most of you are in right now. God is tripping you down to bring you back to the place of nakedness so that all your self-righteousness and all your self-worth is gone. Do you know you have to come to that before you can be converted? You have to be stripped of your pride and your self-righteousness and your self-worth before God can do anything with you. And what happened is psychology has built such a mountain in people of self-worth and self-love, the gospel has to come down and pull the rug back out from under it, see? That's why, that's why this kind of preaching is so hated. Because it tears down that man-made mountain of Babel that's been built in this modern system. And it brings ba man back down to the responsibility of his own sin. Thank you, Michael, for that little dialogue. That's right, Selena. That's absolutely right. That's right, Chris. I'm looking back at some of the... Vanessa says, Kenny, I ended up screaming at God last night and let out my emotions, like you said. Should I continue to do that? Like, feel like, yes, absolutely. Don't stop, Vanessa. However you feel, you let it go. Let it rip. Yeah, I muted it. I'm sorry, Selena. Well, good, good, Shandy. That's that's awesome. Are you gonna mute again? Yeah, I did. I muted it. You're behind, probably. Cindy, are you still here, sis? Yeah, I know. I saw it. What are you doing, Harvester? Are you coming in? All right. I'd like to pray for my dear sister, Cynthia. Tara, can you join me? Pray for Cindy. All else, Judy. Judy and whoever else wants to pray. My Lord. I have seen this heart in Cindy that's reawakening, becoming hungry again. You know you started such a good work, such a beautiful work so many years ago. You finish what you start. My God, Continue this work. 
continue this work. Keep hold of her. Keep a firm hold on her like you did me coming back. Lord, you kept a firm hold on me. Even when it seemed like I was slipping away, couldn't get a grip. You held on. You held on, told me you wouldn't let me go. You're going to finish this job. Give you praise for it, Lord. Amen. I got to tell you a story, Cindy. Maybe you heard it, but I'll tell it again. Now, this is when I was trying to come back to God several years ago. And oh, was I struggling, sis? I'd have moments of burst, you know, where the sunlight would burst into my soul, and then I'd have moments of darkness. This went back and forth, and I'm, I'm talking to a lot of you here. This went back and forth a long time, years. Doesn't have to be that way with you, but it was with me. And I would have these sunbursts, I would call them, where the truth of God would ring back in my heart, and then I would go back into a state of darkness. The clouds basically would go back over the sun, so to speak. And this particular day, I'd gotten up, and I still had my business at the time, and I was still just trying to go through the mundane rituals of everyday life, trying to make money and trying to survive and just really, really fighting my way back, so to speak. What's up, Bid? So on my way back, I was driving, while I was driving to, home, to work one morning, Cindy, and uh, I remember, I, th I think, I don't know if he was here when I told this, but all of a sudden the smell came into my van and it was like the smell of my own old life. It's the only way I can explain it. It was like a party smell. It was like a, it was like all my past was just, it was just, and I just knew it was spiritual because it just, it just awakened my olfactories. And it was, it was a moment of darkness. And I felt like those old tentacles trying to pull me back in to my old life. And, and it just left. You know, it left. I was, so it really brought me down and it, left, and it left. And then the Holy Spirit came. The Holy Spirit came right in behind it. Like he sat down right next to me in that seat. He said, Kenny, I'm not going to let you go. And Cindy, that's the same word that he would speak to you right now. He's not going to let you go. And it's going to seem like you're slipping and struggling. You're going to have these moments of burst. Or you're going to have these moments of darkness. It says count it all joy. Because God's bringing you through into clarity. And burning up some stuff in you. That's burning up some stuff, cooking you down, bringing you through the fire, making sure that nothing unclean comes through. And, and he's at work. And these moments where the clouds in front of the sun is, is when God is working. God is working when the sun's out and God's working when the sun's behind the clouds, sis. You have to realize that. And you'll see it more and more. You truly will. That's right, Salino. That's exactly right. Spiritual poverty. That's where God works. I like it, Sean. Bless your heart. That's right, Vanessa, but you know what? The ball's in your court, sis. 
the Bible says, break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord. Till he come and rain righteousness upon you. I know some of you feel like you're hanging on by a thread, but God is at work. God's bringing you to the place of spiritual poverty. He has to. It's the only way he can work. You got anything left in your pocket. You can't come in the kingdom. Only those with empty pockets can come in. Praise God. Did anybody message Courtney? I did. All right. She did as well. She might still be working. And as the deer thirst for the water, Lord, so my soul longs for thee. Oh, really, Selena? Wow, that's just the Lord showing you, isn't it? My soul thirsts for the living God. That's going to be very soon, Shandy. That spirit of intercession is going to be upon you very soon. The Lord said that he was going to do a work tonight. And many of you are going to start a work where he left off. And you're not going to be the same after tonight. That's what he just told me an hour ago. And when he speaks, it's the truth. We just have to believe his word, don't we? Glory to God. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Huh. There you go, Selena. And how many times that's happened, you know, with, and you've not even known it. Every once in a while, he lets you see how close it is, doesn't he? If I told you how many cars have come across the medium, that, that if I told you how many of those that are, that's happened to me, you'd be you'd be you'd be surprised. I can think of at least twenty that come across. And I just happened to catch them. Just missed them. Just missed them. At least 20 that I can think of. And God had just shown me. He just shows me every time. I got this, Kenny. I got this. You ain't going nowhere until I say. And as the deer thirst for the water. I'm going to wait for some more folks God, to come in here. And um, in the meantime, we're going to listen to a song. I'm going to listen to a song. Yes, Selena, that's what he said. I 
There you go, Chris. Hey, Kenda. My dear Kenda. There you go, Chris. God made a way of escape, didn't he? Awesome. Well, you know what? The good thing about this, Vanessa, I can. Courtney's is the only one I know for sure is not copyrighted, so I can play it. But, um, but I would play it every day anyway. I'd pray it. I'd, I'd still play it every day. Hey, Leslie. Yeah, I, could, I would, Sean, but it's copyrighted, and I get a strike on my channel. I'd like to do that, bro, but I can't. I know some people do it anyway, but they, they get away with it somehow. Yeah, you could, Michael. Absolutely. I'm sure Terry himself wouldn't wouldn't mind, Sean. I'm sure he wouldn't. But he's he's got a label, you know, he's he has a label. It's still about money, friend. You know, what can I say? Hey Logan, what's up? personally think it's disgraceful that anything Christian is copyrighted. I think it's disgraceful. And, and I say that with utter content, contempt. That's what I always liked about Wilkerson's ministry, you know, right on his tapes. Right at the end of his tapes. Old cassette tapes we used to have. None of these messages are copyrighted and you are welcome to make free distribution, free copies for di free distribution to your friends right there in the, in the recording. Shameful. Don't get me started. That's right, Chris. Well, I would say even bigger than that, Chris. Why Why did those labels, you know, why, why, why does someone say they're a Christian organization and then copyright? I never did get that. Like, are you serious right now? Are you, are you seriously telling me that right now? Now I can understand if you, if you, protecting it from being resold by somebody else but it should be freely be freely copied it should be able to be freely copied i mean if it's if it's for the purpose of the holy ghost my goodness folks come on Celine says one time we were out doing a big ministry outdoor music thing it was in a valley in out of town i had to drive back and a big old bull moose came running out the bush about to run in front car on the highway I just yelled Jesus he stopped right there in front. <laughs> that's cool <laughs> that's cool Selena <laughs> Logan you're the talk of the town in here tonight you know that everybody's wanting to know did Logan get restored did Logan get restored have you really Judy well the, she was what a coincidence that's one of my verses tonight What a coincidence. I definitely have to share the one that Sean gave earlier to me. Of course, this is talking about the. Um, thank you, Courtney. Thank you, Courtney. So before I read God's word, I'm going to pray. Hmm. 
Hmm. I know who that is. I know who. You know what? That's right. You're right. You know, let's let's just address that. Gluttony is a sin. You're absolutely right. Is a sin. You know what? And and anybody in this family that has that problem are repenting and turning from it and humbling themselves. In fact, we'll just have Tess talk about that when she comes on. We'll just have her talk about that. So we'll we'll talk about that. You know what? You're in a dangerous position to come in here and say these things in this room. Very dangerous. All oh, people don't even know, do they? They don't even know what they're doing. And I'm not going to justify any sin, whether it's in my own family or not. Glut needs a sin. No doubt. It needs to be repented of. evil stuff in the So Matthew says, when I was younger, maybe around 12 or 13, I used to be a rebel on the streets, and there was no time I had a powerful green laser pen showing it at card and at people through their house windows, cars probably. And there was one house that I shined into, and it was Lad's house from school. was a year older than me, which I didn't know at the time, and I also didn't know that he had epilepsy. Anyway, I ended up shining a laser through the house window onto him. He had an epileptic fit. Dad ran out of the house and chased me. And the lad, the lads I, I was with, and I didn't admit it was me. And the lad I was with was thrown over a hedge by the dad. Anyway, long story short, the Holy Spirit brought this to my attention recently, and I am considering apologizing to him via Facebook. You know what? That's good, Matthew. Absolutely. You should do that. You should do that. I think that's good, friend. Hey, Sean. Cindy, are you still here, sis? Hey, prayer warrior. You're on early. How are you, friend? Okay, Cindy. I want to pray before I get started, Father. Thank you for this opportunity to share your word. Speak into our hearts. God, let no unclean spirit come into this room. Keep it holy and sanctified. 
separated. Those words that are spoken by evil would not find a place in people's hearts. Will we be encouraged by your words? Lift us up. Clean us up. Purify us. Show us, O oh God, what needs to change in our life. Jesus' name, amen. Doing good, doing good, prayer warrior. Really, uh, really hearing the Lord say some wonderful things. Hey, Jimmy Furrows. Jimmy Furrows. I'll be right back, friends.
Hey, Angela. This is the day that the Lord has made. So I want to read this out of Jeremiah. This is a very, very hopeful verse. Sean O'Connor gave me this morning. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass it right on. Pass it right on. Now, of course, this is talking about Jeremiah is talking to the through the Holy Spirit is talking to the Jews about what he will, what he will do. Um, and I feel like. It's, it's funny because I woke up thinking along these lines and then Sean sent me this verse to really confirm what God was saying and that when God begins to do a work, it's a marvelous work. It's a marvelous, it's a, it's a marvelous supernatural thing that he does. Now, before I get into this, I want to share a little experience that, that I've, uh, that I've, I've heard the account. Now this account of the revival in the Hebrides back in the 50s. When God began to move on that island there near Scotland. And people began to awaken to God. But there was one account of a man. This guy's talking about his father in this video that got converted. And he said, he said everyone on this island had no concern for their souls. I want you to think about this. No concern for their souls. He said they were drunkards. The whole island was drunkards. He said they were living in sin and debauchery. Had no concern. He said, but when this revival started. He said his dad was, his dad was standing at the gable end of his house. You know, the end of his house. Looking down over the road. He said he was just looking down over the road. He said all of a sudden start, something started happening within him. He said, and he started to get aware of God and started to get hungry for God. And this is when God began to move in this island through these prayer warriors, through these two old women, these old widows that set their heart to seek God until he would come and rain down righteousness upon that island. And when he started, the people began to awaken. Their hearts began to awaken. Why? Because God was in town. God was in town. It's called divine influence. And this is what the Lord was talking to me about today. <clears throat> he said, I'm going to change some of these people in here. I'm going to affect them divinely. I'm going to move upon them. I'm going to begin a work again. They're going to awaken. Tell them to respond to my spirit. And that's all I've got. I can't do anything beyond that other than relay to you what I heard and what he intends to do. And some of you are floundering around. You're flopping like a fish out of water on a, in a mud puddle trying to get another gasp of air. Well, there you go, Shandy. Wrong question. Take that how out of there. H, that, that, that's not allowed in this room. That word's banned. H-O-W. Banned out of this room. So anybody that says it, it's banned. There's no how-tos in the, in the Bible. There's no how-to. There's only when the Spirit of God comes to you, you know what? You'll know what to do. You won't be asking how. You'll know what to do. You either respond or you don't respond. You either say yes or you don't say yes. You either say not today or today. It's that simple. There's no hows to it. Okay. So let's let's stop asking how do we? How do we? How do we? You know why we're asking that? Because we're in the flesh. When the spirit comes, just say yes. That's right. You got it. Just say yes. So here it is, Jeremiah. Behold, I will gather them out of all countries. 
whether I have driven them in my anger and in my fury. Now look at this, folks. This is God saying, I have driven the Jews out because of my anger and my fury. You know why he did that? Because of their rebellion. Because they didn't want to walk with him. Because he was trying to gather him together, a people to represent him in the earth, and they were stubborn. So he drove them out. Drove them out into the, into the, into the enemy's camp. Said, now, if you don't want me, this is the alternative. And this is what happens to us when we live in rebellion and we walk away from God. We go into the enemy's camp and we get plundered by him. And then we whine and cry and mourn and moan and wonder, what, why, where's God? Well, what did you do? You left the camp. You stepped over the fence and went into the enemy's camp through your rebellion. You see, that's what it means when, it's, when he says, I drove you out. That just means I let you have what you wanted. That's all. That's what God does. He lets you have. That's what it means to turn you over to something. That simply means that he's done tug of war with you. Right? He's pulling on you into righteousness and you're pulling against him into unrighteousness and the tug of war gets weary and God says, okay. And he lets go of the rope and the red tape goes across the line and now you're in the enemy's camp. That's what it means to turn you over. That don't mean that God just sits out with some evil demise. Just, well, I'm really going to get them. I'm going to turn them over to their reprobate mind because I'm a diabolical evil God. Simply means he lets go of the rope. Because you're burning his hands, man. You're burning your hands, his hands with your rebellion, you see. Let's go of the rope. Turns you over. So, you get driven in to the enemy's camp. You get beat and pummeled and bruised and kicked around because you're rebellious. There's no other reason. It has nothing to do. Well, that's not the question, Yelitsa. Will you come back? You know, listen, here's what it comes down to. If you're, if you're, if God has left you because you have grieved him, how is he going to come back? How is he going to come back? If you have left him by rebelling against his ways, by falling into sin, whatever it might be, compromising, maybe loving a, a person, a man or a woman more than him, maybe idolizing something. And somewhere along the line, your heart tipped the other way. And you started worshiping the creature more than the creator who has forever praised. Amen. So how do you get back there? See, if the scale tipped and you're in the enemy's camp, how do you get back into God's camp? Well, first of all, if you've got something hidden under your tent, like Achan did, you got to get it out. You got to get it out into the open. And however you left, the gate you went out is the gate you come back in, you see. You got to come back in through repentance. So here it is, Jeremiah, listen to this. Behold, I have gathered them out of all, I will gather you out of all nations. Whether I have driven them in my anger and my fury and my great wrath and I will bring them again under this place, and I will cause them to dwell in safety. So there's an end to this. God is, is bringing you through this wilderness. He's bringing you through this dryness. He's bringing you through this time of chastisement. Because he wants you to see the severity of what you've done. Elitza, will you quit with that? No more. No more. Okay. No more of those questions. Just listen, please. Okay. Turn off the mouth and then listen. Okay. Just sit down and let me talk to you. And they shall be my people and I will be their God. Hey, Lord, what's up, brother? And I will give them one heart. In one way, 
that they may fear me forever. For the good of them and of their children after them. In other words, God's going to be good. God's going to be good to them. He's going to move on them. He's going to he's going to start operating. Just like he told me today, I am going to move. I'm going to move upon these people. Tell them I'm going to move. See, Yelitsa, you got a you got a you got a demon screaming in your ear right now. That's why you keep talking. And you and see what's happening is he's trying to talk over what I'm telling you. That's why you keep blah 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 because that devil's driving you to say these things. But I rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus, and I silence it. Now open up your ears, sis. And close them. Close that mouth. Okay, close it. Listen to the word of God. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them, and I will not turn away from them to do them good, but to put my heart, my fear in their hearts. The God is going to put his fear in your heart. To put my fear in your heart that they may not depart from me. See, this is what's going on right now. Some of you need the fear of God back in your heart. You lost it. You lost it. But God is at work restoring that fear. That has to come in by the Holy Spirit. It was grace that taught my heart to fear. And grace my fears relieved. Just like Shandy was talking about earlier, about being ashamed. That's the work of the Holy Spirit, allowing that to happen in her. <clears throat> For thus saith the Lord, like as I have brought all this great evil upon this people. Now listen, let me tell you what this means. This means that God loves you so much that he allows pressure on you. You hear me? God loves you so much, he allows the pressure to bear down on you. And that is to drive you into God deeper. See, there's two effects of that. You can get bitter. You can run. You can run back into the world. Or you can say, my God, this pressure is too much. I'm coming in. I'm coming in. And that's why God had to unleash the enemies on Israel. The same way he unleashes it on us. When I was backslidden, I had the power of those of the enemy on me all the time, pressuring me. And I'm so thankful for that. So thankful for that. Because like I said, if I would have just been able to build my own empire and become my own king and skip through life, I could have died that way. Building bigger barns, tearing down barns and building bigger barns and tearing down barns and big and lost out with God. But thank God for adversity to trip us up. God help us. For thus saith the Lord, like I have brought, I'm not answering those devils anymore, Yelitsa. I'm not talking to your devils no more. I'll talk to you, but I'm not talking to your devils. So don't, don't ask any more of them questions. For I thought, I thus saith the Lord, like as I have brought all this great evil upon this people, so will I bring upon them all this good that I have promised them. And the field so shall be bought in this land whereof you say it is desolate without man or beast it is given into the hand of the Chaldeans men shall buy fields for money and subscribe I'm not going to go into all that but the point is God is going to restore his children he's going to put his fear in your heart again and here's the number one thing you need you need hunger you need hunger for God That's your number one need. 
want to ask you something. I want to ask you something here, something very important. These, these are some por- points that the Holy Spirit gave me today. And I want you to ask these questions to yourself, okay? Is your prolonged misery your payment for your sins? There's a word in an old song, alas, and did my Savior bleed. And this is what it says. It says, drops of grief cannot repay the debt of love I owe. So, O oh Lord, I give myself away. Is all that I can do. Did you hear it? Now, now, what does that mean? Your prolonged misery cannot pay for your sins. I think some of you have fallen into a state of misery, and I believe that you feel that you're paying off your sins with this misery. That the worse you feel about your past is the more payments you're making toward it. This is an easy rut to fall into, friends. And you'll ever be in that rut because there is no making up for what you did. Can't make up for it. There's no way this boy can undo all of his stuff that he done against God. Impossible. Take me a lifetime to undo it. Even if I could discover all of it. So my misery cannot pay my debt. You see? Can't pay your debt. Are you paying for your sin with sorrow? Now, if you're paying for your sin with sorrow, then that's worldly sorrow. It brings death. It brings separation. You see, there's only one payment. It's called blood. There's only one payment for your past. It's blood. There was only one payment for your past the first time, and there's only one payment for your past the second time, and it's blood. Misery, true godly sorrow, will bring you to the point of needing the remedy. Listen to this now. True godly sorrow will bring you to the point of neediness. Sorrowing unto repentance means... The Bible talks about godly sorrow, sorrow unto repentance. That means that your sorrow begins to get narrowed down, not just by what you have done to yourself, but what you have done to God. See? See, Vanessa has a backwards sorrow. There's a good example. Her misery makes her feel bitter towards Jesus. She has a backward sorrow because she's not yet seen what she's done to God. She's only seen what she's done to herself. See, That's worldly sorrow. And that brings death. Godly sorrow means I am sorry, God, for robbing you of what you paid for. You paid for my heart. You've paid for my worship. You've paid for my devotion. You've paid for my sanctification. You've paid for my my intimacy with me. And I've squandered it. I've done my own thing. God, I've walked away from that holy thing. See, this is when you know godly sorrow has set into your heart. Is when you see that you have been a rebel that you've cheated your father out of that which he purchased. That's godly sorrow. See, this is why a lot of people ain't getting nowhere. Because they have worldly sorrow. And they're only feeling sorry for themselves. And as long as you feel sorry for yourselves, you ain't going to get nowhere. You have to see your mistreatment. Look, this is how you have to see it. You have to see Jesus at the whipping post. And you have to see yourself as a Roman soldier with the cat of nine tails in your hand. Ripping the flesh out of his back. Because that's what your sin did to him, you see. That's what your sin did to him. You have to see yourself as a beard yanker. 
tearing those locks of hair from his face. You have to see yourself as a man cramming a crown of thorns down upon the Son of God's head. You have to see yourself with a hammer in your hand driving the nails into his wrist. You have to see yourself that way. This is called godly sorrow. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head to such a worm as I? All oh, folks, you've got to see it. Well, Yulitsa, if you're begging forgiveness, you're insulting God. You're, you're insulting God. You know that? You're bringing insults against the Most High. If you're begging for forgiveness. Do you know that? You're trampling through the blood of Christ. If you're begging for forgiveness. Because you're insulting what's been paid, see? You're telling God that he can't forgive you unless you beg for it like a dog. And God don't work that way, friends. Don't insult him anymore. Some of you in here are insulting God. You are insulting the Most High because you're telling him that your sins are above his blood. You're telling him that your sins are special. You're telling him that your backslidden state is a case that he cannot handle. You're insulting God. And this is why his hand's up to you. Because you are not taking what has been paid for. And it's an insult to God. Hey, Courtney Cannon, Murphy, hello, friend. Hey, Jessica, good to see you, sis. That's right, Chris, absolutely, friend. Right, Shandy, but see, that's what, that's what you got to see yourself, see, because it's us. This is what Peter, you know, that's what the first sermon was about, Shandy, on the day of Pentecost. Peter pointed out that bunch and said, you crucified him. He came to save you and you ripped the flesh off of him. And they said, they were cut to the heart. What, what must we do? How do we get out of this infraction against God? He said, well, believe on it. Believe on the Lord Jesus. Repent. Turn from what you did. We all killed him, Shandy. You know that? We all killed him. He came to his own and we received him not, it says. A man of sorrows acquainted with grief. Nobody, even his closest friends, came to his aid. Nobody. In that garden, they forsook him. At the cross, they forsook him. And he went by himself up that hill. Went by himself. And he cared when you didn't. Then we despised him and reject him and saw him smitten by God. My, my, my. It's what you got to see, children. If you ever going to be converted, you got to see that. Last and dear, 
my Savior bleed? Did my sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? Oh, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. You know what salvation is? I'm going to tell you what it is. Salvation is when you see what you deserve. Salvation is when you truly see what you deserve. And you truly see what was paid. And you truly see that he that paid it didn't have to pay it, but wanted to. And so you have to see the cross as a retribution for your sin. You have to see the cross as satisfying public justice when you could not. Well, you lead to your your lion, and you're lying, and that's a lying spirit, and that's not true. I've told you over and over, told you over and over that that is exactly what happened to me and Tess, and you still don't believe it. You see, no more of that foolishness, no more. Where you at, Logan? Yulitsa, you got a devil talking straight out of your mouth tonight. You know that? And I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know what the world world is world has gone wrong with me, but I need help since ever since my faith snapped and I had movement of unbelief. Things have been so different and weird since despite believing again. Where'd you come from, Alex? What's your what's your story? Well, what that is, Murph, that's a spirit speaking out of her against us. This restoration. She doesn't realize it, but she's yielding. She's yielding to it. Yeah, see this? I'm not so sure, sure about her here in this situation. I'm going to give her a time out because I'm not sure about her. She's got she got me wondering. Because um, this sounds like more of an assault against the message than it is just somebody expressing their, their state. You see how it's turned? See, there's another spirit coming up here against this message. We're not going to have it. Got to use wisdom, folks. Don't don't entertain these people when they talk like that. Because that's a demon speaking straight out. We don't need that in this room. That, that's evil. Discouragement. I rebuke it in the name of the Lord. Psalms 42. I want to I want to I want to read this. I want to read this because this this really brings this really brings into focus. Um yeah, people come under control of spirits, folks. I mean, just because they're one minute, they may seem like they're really looking for the truth. The next minute, that spirit can manifest and start speaking negative things into the room. I've seen it happen a thousand times. So don't just assume that what people are say, saying is coming from their heart. It could be coming from that evil spirit. That's just the facts. As the heart panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before him? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? You see? 
That's what the gainsayers say. Where is thy God? All these people in here crying and weeping all the time. Where's their God? Why ain't he fixing none of them? Hmm? Psychology could fix them. Why don't they just go get some pills for that? I think that's what was being said. That's what was being said. This, Dave, this king called David, who's supposed to be this great king, is crying all the time, brokenhearted all the time. What's wrong with him? Don't he have it better? I mean, he's got a kingdom coming his way. What's up with that dude? Crying, crying, brokenhearted, brokenhearted. My soul, my soul, my heart, my heart pants after God. Pants after God. Pants after God. Folks, this is what's got to happen. Something of hunger has got to come up in your heart. Something of hunger for God alone. Not just for his stuff. Not just for his dainties. Not just for his blessings. But for God alone. That's what he's trying to cook you down to. trying to cook you down to that and bring you to the point where you can hear that heartbeat of God come unto me come unto me come unto me come unto me not for my stuff not for my blessings not for this not for that but come unto me because I'm God and I want to have fellowship with you and I gave my blood for that very reason folks so you put aside all those things all those other side things that you're seeking feelings. I want to feel better. I want to feel good. I want to feel, I don't want to feel this way. I don't want to feel that way. Folks, that's all earthly, sensual, devilish. You need a hunger for God. A hunger for God. Alone. And God has told me that this night he was going to birth some hunger in some of you. What he told me earlier as I was praying. Tell them, Kenny, that if they will pray with you and believe me, that I will put hunger in them. And there's people in this room that can pray. And you're going to be praying just like this song. Your tears. Where's Jasmine, by the way? Listen, when I remember that these things, I pour out my soul. Are you here, Cindy, by the way? Are you still here? I hope you're here. I pour out my soul in me. I had gone with the multitude. Listen. You guys got to pay close attention to this psalm right here because this is a lot of your hearts. A lot of your hearts are in this condition. Okay, listen to me. When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I had gone with the multitude. I went to them to the house of God. See, he was going to church. David was going to church. He was going and gathering with the congregation, but it wasn't getting it done. It wasn't satisfying him to be in the midst of that hypocrisy. With the voice of joy and praise, with the multitude that kept the holy day. They were all going to the synagogue, keeping the Sabbath, doing all the right things. He said, but it ain't cutting it, man. Because I'm hungry for something. I'm hungry for God himself. This is what David was saying. He said, away with that religion. I'm not here to appease God. I'm not here to try to make God happy with some things that I say. Or saying the right words or singing nice little song, sing songies. He said, I'm away with that. He said, I'm I'm hungry. I'm hungry for something other than that. And that is intimacy with God. That God has allowed me to come into his courts to have fellowship with him. That's where I'm supposed to be. To have fellowship with God in the intimate place, in the holy place behind the veil, where the glorious riches of Christ Jesus abide. Will you go there? Do you know that it's there? Do you see it and hear it and feel it? Do you not know that it's there? 
There's a place and it's behind the veil. It's been torn and it's a place where we meet with God. It's a place where we can fellowship with the Holy One, but no unclean thing shall enter in because it must be cleansed before it goes in. Oh, come into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, but come through the blood, come through the blood, come through the blood. That is the veil. That is to say his flesh. Come through the cross, come through the blood, and you will be clean and pure, and mercy will have its way in your life, and then you can come in to obtain grace for help to come in a time of need. All the veil is torn, and the glorious riches are behind it. But see, you can't get in there until you come through the cleansing, the washing of the conscience, the purification of the heart through the blood of Jesus. Got room for another? Always got room for the harvester. <laughs> Hello. Hello, friends. Was it for crimes? But then he goes on and he says it like this. He says it like this. Why art thou cast down, O, o soul? Why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I yet shall praise him for the help of his countenance. You know what that means? God's going to look at you, friend. And there's help in that countenance. When he begins to look at you, seek his face. And that's his countenance. And when his countenance starts to look at you, rays of life are going to shine into your heart and bring it back to life. But you got to be willing to look at his face. It's the help of his countenance that you need. It's because you are seeking his face with all your heart. Can't be partial, friends. You can't come in with a partial view or a partial hunger. This has got to be a full out assault of your heart upon the kingdom of God. There is no other way. There is no partial. This is why people cannot come in. Partial hearts, partial hearts, partial hearts. There has to be a sobriety. There has to be a there has to be a diligence. There has to be a hunger. Moving in your heart, a hunger for God Himself. Is anybody keeping up with this? Make sure this is not being distracted by gainsayers. I can't read it if I'm preaching. Yeah, I'm watching here. I yeah. don't see anything. Do you see something? I well, don't? no, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't. What's Alex saying? Is everybody keeping up with Alex? Is that a lore Jesus saves? Yes, okay. that's a lore. Right. Yeah. Welcome, the Lord. Is Courtney here? Courtney, Cindy must have left, didn't she? Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Can any of you say that? Can any of you raise your hands about that? See, this is a king, folks. This is a king writing this. You got to remember that. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? O my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and from the Hermonites and from the hill. You know, he's saying, I got to go back. I got to go back to these former victories. I got to go back to a time when I saw God move in my life. Remember the former days when you were illuminated. Call to remembrance the former days. You know how many times this old boy had to go back to the original encounter with God in my mind? Thousands. Thousands. God would take me back there. God, the Holy Ghost, would take me back there and say, Kenny, remember what I did. Remember what I did. Call into remembrance what I did. Remember how I pulled you out of the pit? Do you not think I can do it now? Visit that in your mind. Visit that first experience in your mind. Right. Visit it. Visit it. Visit it. 
because that is the place where you call into remembrance the power of God. Right, right. Remember the day when you had no way out and you were trying to claw up a, a soggy, muddy bank with no steps, no roots to grab onto. Remember it? Mm -hmm. Waist deep in mud yeah. water. Remember it? Remember as the sides would begin to fail when you tried to climb out? Remember when you saw a hand come down? Remember that day when you saw a hand come down? The only way out of that pit was God to grab you by the wrist and pull you out. Remember that day? Oh, can he not do it again? Oh, will he not do it again? Does he not have the strength to do it again? To pull you forth from the miry clay. Mm -hmm. Call to remembrance the former days. Deep calleth unto deep. At the noise of thy water spouts. All thy waves and thy billows. Are gone over me. Folks that's some powerful stuff isn't it. You know what a water spout is. I'm sure you've all seen water spouts. It's a tornado over the ocean. It sucks that water up. Sucks that water right up into the clouds. He said the deep of my heart. Calls unto the deep things of God. And it's calling me forth in hunger. To my God. Oh friends when this starts this cyclone of hunger begins to start in your heart. This is when God is at work. And this is what God is going to do tonight in some of you. And he already told me this. Stay with me, friends. Stay with me. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spout. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And in the nighttime, his song shall be with me. Praise be to God. And my prayer unto the God of my life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I will say unto God, my rock. Why hast thou forgotten me? You see, this is what we think. This is what we think, folks. We think God has forgotten us. Mm -hmm. When we feel like that, we think God has abandoned us. Why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? See, other peoples have asked this question too, folks. Not just you. It's written in the book. These are people that went through hell. Literal hell on earth. Mm -hmm. As with a sword in my bones, mine enemies reproach me. While they say daily unto me, where is your God? See, the gainsayers say that about all you in here, by the mm -hmm. way. They say that. They write me emails. How's come ain't none of them people fixed? And see, they want to throw pills at you. They want to throw pills and psychology at you and put you on a couch and try to fix your head. And a bill. Where's your God? Yeah, not to mention the 90 some dollars an hour, $150 an hour, whatever it is. We left that part out, didn't we? Where is your God? But I'm telling you, he's here. And he's about, he's fixing to do something mm -hmm. in your heart. If you'll let him, if you'll let him. That's right. Why art thou cast down on my soul? Why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance. And my God. Mm -hmm. You see it all ends well doesn't it? It all ends well. Don't it end well Sean O'Connor? Praise be to God. <laughs> Think about a deer. A heart panting after the water brooks. I've seen it. I'm a hunt I used to be a hunter. I'm not anymore. But I used to watch those, those deer be run by people. Run by hunters. 
and them poor old things. You'd see them. You'd be you'd be in a in a stand or 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 you know at the end of a deer drive as we call it, and that old poor old thing come through there and just <laughs> just 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 uh, just a uh, literal fog blowing out of their nose from the breath. Panicked. And that's what it is when when we when we when we pant for God. It's a good thing. Jasmine, there's a good example. She's broken. She cries all the time. I said, good. I'm happy for you, Jasmine. Don't stop crying. Whatever you do, don't stop crying. Whatever you do, don't feel comfortable. Please, whatever you do. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Until God becomes your portion. Until you pray through. Mm -hmm. Until mercy is granted to you. Don't give up. Don't stop crying. Please. Don't get happy. Before, before you get in. Don't get complacent with something. Before you get in. Don't lose your conviction. My dear. Oh it's so precious. It's so precious to be broken. You're in such a minority in this country if you have a broken heart. Mm -hmm. Because the majority of this, hung, this country has a hard heart mm -hmm. and hatred towards God and hatred towards righteousness. If your heart is broken, my God, you're in such a wonderful place. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. Oh, it's a precious thing to be broken up. Because they that fall upon the rock shall be broken in pieces. You don't want that rock to fall on you and crumble you to powder, grind you to powder. But you want to fall upon it with a broken heart. Tess, you got anything? Not at the moment, I don't. All right. Listen, the sorrow of the Holy Ghost, godly sorrow, it comes from the Holy Ghost when you hear the word of God. And the hammer of God's word breaks your heart. You know that? That's what, that's what the word of God is designed to do. It's designed to to admonish you. It is designed to break up the hard crusty ground. That's why you must hear it. That's why you must hear the rebuke. Hello Bernice. Now there's a very popular verse in Matthew. And it's a very simple one. But I'm going to read it. Blessed are they, this is chapter 5, verse 5, or 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. For they shall be filled. I want to ask you a question. Do you hunger and thirst after righteousness? Is that, is that your hunger? Do you feel yourself in the absolute place of inadequacy? Do you feel your place in the absolute, your heart in the absolute place of neediness for true righteousness? Have you really come to terms with your own self-righteousness? Have you really? Have you really exhausted all your own resources? Have you really looked in the mirror and said, you ain't got nothing good in you? Have you really? Or are you still trying to bring something to God? Do you see the depths of your need? Do you see your spiritual inadequacies? 
Or are you still blaming God for your state? Hmm? Are you blaming Adam for your state? Are you blaming Eve for your state? Are you blaming the devil for your state? Or have you taken full responsibility for your own rebellion against God? You see, that's where it starts. Oh, hunger and thirst for righteousness, friends. You can't go wrong. The Bible says, guarantees that those are the ones that will be filled. Now, if you ain't there yet and you're not hungering for thirst and righteousness, thirst for hunger, hunger and thirst for righteousness, then you just hang on. The word of God is still working in you. Hallelujah. Selena, are you still here? Cindy, are you still here? Courtney, are you still here? Yeah, I think Courtney is. I do believe. Okay, Selena's here. Wish Natalie was here. Courtney's here. Cindy, are you here? I don't think Lisa's here. No, Lisa? No, I I think she had something else going on. Oh. Hey, Bo. Awesome, Bo. Praise God. Hey, Bernice. Amen, Bernice. It's a good chapter, isn't it? Mm. Praise God. Elisa, you're here? Okay. Okay, Okay, who else? Cindy? Did Cindy leave? Where are you at, Cindy? Speak up. Hey, Davos. I got something for you, too, bro. Hang on. No, you just got timed out, Yulitsa. You just got put time out. Time out. You're, you're good. I just wanted you to calm down and not... He's speaking that negative stuff, sis. Hey, Alonzo. I need to lead these. I need to lead these folks in a prayer, and I want Cindy to be here. Can you can you give her a message? See if she can come back in. It's important she be here. The Lord told me to do this tonight, and. Um, that's all I know. It's not magic. It's just something that God wanted me to do with y'all. Elite said, let's not worry about your marriage right now. You can't worry about that. Just be concerned about your soul. Okay. Because your marriage ain't going to be fixed until you're fixed. And I said, don't, don't, don't worry about that. You're praying backwards. Lord Jesus, bring bring everybody in here. Logan, are you still in here? <coughs> Was it for crimes that I had done? He grows upon the tree. I don't know. I just wondered about him, actually. Mm-hmm. About ten minutes ago, Vanessa. I have no way to get a hold of him because he's never given me his email. Oh, Lord, I give myself away. Is all that I can do. Yeah, just keep praying for Thomas. 
At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And there she is. All right. Logan, you still here? Everybody stay with me a moment, okay? This is important, very important. Folks, I'm sure you know by now that I can't fix you. I'm sure you figured that out. I'm sure you know by now that Tess can't fix you. I'm sure you know by now that no amount of, of, of talking you into it can fix you. It's going to take something supernatural. Okay. It's going to take something coming down from above. Mm -hmm. now, now, the word of God is powerful. It's quick. And it, it has great effect. And the word of God can prepare the heart and the soil for what he's going to do supernaturally within you. So many of your hearts are prepared. No, Paul, you haven't blasphemed the Holy Spirit. Look, look, this is not. Listen. We're not going to talk about this this moment. Now, see, folks, stay with me now. Stay with me. Stay with me. Don't leave my eyes right now, okay? Don't leave my eyes. Look me right in the eye. Mm -hmm. Okay? Don't look at that chat. Turn that chat off if you have to. This is important. Here's what God told me to do. He wants you to pray. Everyone in this room. And we're going to agree with you. And Sarah's going to agree with you. And Murphy's going to agree with you. And, and Judy's going to agree with you. And, and people in this room, other people in this room, Prayer warrior, Jimmy, I'm going to agree that God do something supernatural here. And here's what he wants to do. He said, can he tell him this? I will put my hunger in them. I will put my hunger in them if they will receive it. And I just want you to lead them in a simple prayer. Mm -hmm. So children, listen. Mean this from your heart. I want you to type it up there. When I give it to you. Okay. Just stay with me. Here's what I want you to say. And the Lord's given me this as I'm telling it to you. Father. My heart is cold. Say it. Just say it. Everybody that needs to say it. I want you to say it. Confess these things to God. Okay. This is what he wants. Thank you, Lord, for this work, this powerful work that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'll wait on y'all. Mm -hmm. Listen, if you're not if you're not on fire for God, your heart's cold. Yeah. You hear me? If you're not on fire for God, and if you're not praying always and fervent in spirit, you're cold. So just confess it. Don't be religious now. Just confess it. It's the only way God's going to restore you. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, help us in this room. Help us in this room. Okay, is everybody that said it is going to say it? Everybody that's going to say it said it? Let's see, Courtney, Jasmine, Yulitsa, Nathan, Selena, Chris, Alexis, Shandy, Bernice, Yes, 
Oh, that's who I was waiting on. So here's the next thing. Now this may seem seem silly, folks, but this is what this is what this is what God wants us to do. It's a simple, very simple confession. And Father, I know that I should have hunger for you. Yes, Lord. I don't know where Buddy is. Buddy's not here either. He should be here. Amen. 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 This is the big one here, folks. Mm -hmm. Listen. Father, please grant me your hunger. Father, please grant me your Father, hunger. Father, please grant me your hunger. Grant me your hunger. Yes, yes, Lord. I could use oh, more yes. fire. I'll take it. Hallelujah. Yes. I need fire. Yes, Lord. Grant us your hunger. Yes, Lord. <laughs> we cannot be quenched yes, until we yes, have all of you, Lord. you, Lord. Grant us your hunger, oh God. Yes. Let, let, our souls, let it flood my soul. Yes, Lord. Oh, God. Yes. Come and do it, Lord. Come and do it. Yes. Come and do it, oh God. Hunger for righteousness. Yes. Give me your hunger for righteousness. Hunger for righteousness. Yes, Lord. Father, we believe you tonight. Father, we believe you tonight. That you will give what you say you will give. That you will give what you say you will give. And you will satisfy us. And you will satisfy us. With your spirit. With your spirit. Thank you, Lord. God, we open up our hearts to you tonight. These hearts that are dead and cold. Resurrection life begin to flow into them, Lord. It's all I can pray. It's all I can do is ask you, oh God, to begin your work that you started so long ago in each one of them. Finish this precious work. Finish this precious work. Hallelujah. 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 More about Jesus would I know more of his grace more of his saving fullness see the more of his love who died for me more about Jesus, let me learn and more of his holy will deserve.
Spirit of God, my teacher be, showing the things of Christ to me. Oh, more, more about Jesus. Show me more and more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness see. More of his love who died for me. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for hunger. It's so precious to have it. Grant it unto these your children. Yes. Granted to yes, these God. your children, oh God, do a marvelous work, a work that no man can do. Yes. No man can do this work. It's marvelous in our sight when God does it. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, the pricelessness of hunger for God. Granted as a gift. Father, granted as a gift in this room tonight. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Pastor Woody. Hello, well, friend. hello there. Good to see you, friend. In a while. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Louisa. Amen. Good verse, Sean. Hey, little blue. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Good to see you, Pastor, my dear brother. Lord, you are more beautiful than diamonds. Nothing I desire compares with you. Lord, your life is divine, eternal. Lord, your life regenerated me. Lord, your life is growing within me until I am fully conformed to thee. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Oh, Lord Jesus, move in this room tonight. God, we need a supernatural touch. All of us need a supernatural touch. Break forth your spirit in this room, just like you did for us all initially. 
when we didn't have anything, before we had religion, before we had know-how, God, you just came down upon us. He just pulled us out of the pit. He just moved upon us in supernatural power just because you're good, just because we believe the word spoken to our hearts. And we believe you tonight for full restoration of everyone in this room. That God, you would do a mighty work according to your spirit, according to your spirit, because it's not by power and it's not by might, but it's by the spirit of God that men's hearts are transformed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Seems like it'd be a good time for Courtney's song, doesn't it? the words up Mikey get them words up Mikey listen to the words of this song folks this should be the prayer of all of us it really should I don't care how religious you are how much you know you know I've been in this thing for 30 some years it don't matter what I know folks what matters is if my heart's broken before God my heart is humble before the Lord then he'll do a work I have to admit I don't have it. I have to admit that I can't do it. I have to admit that it's all Jesus. You're in good company, friend. There's a lot of us in here. God is more powerful than your second time around, Paul. He's more powerful than all your iniquities, friend. Praise God. Praise God. to say that you are the only thing we need God we do it publicly we say it publicly we're weak we say it publicly we're needy we say it publicly that we cannot do anything outside of the vine without you we can do nothing we acknowledge that before a holy God tonight that we are in need of divine intervention divine influence from almighty God Hear our cry tonight, Lord. Rim the heavens and come down, Father, and be in the midst of your people again. Glorify thy Son in the midst of thy people, O God. I love you, Sean O'Connor. Love you, my brother. May the hand of God be strong upon you, friend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
may you wake up as a fire breather. May the hand of God be strong upon you, my brother. Pray for my dear pastor, Woody, my, my dear brother. God, I ask for a touch upon his body. Touch upon his spirit, that anointing, that calling, oh God. The grace of God flow down upon him right now. Lord Jesus. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Did everybody say they wanted to hear that again? No, I, I did. I, must have I thought I heard I thought I heard everybody say that. So, yeah. right. Now that Michael's putting up the words. You can scroll back and start where Michael started putting the words. I right, can't bring him forward. tomorrow we can talk, huh, brother? I'll be at home tomorrow, so I'll be working here at the house, but I'll be here. Let this be your theme song, friends. Let this be 
Let this be the, the, the thoughts of your heart. And God won't be far behind. get the link for you Paul I'll put it up it's called Song of Repentance it's by uh, Courtney that's here in the chat well it's by the Holy Ghost but she wrote it down we'll put it that way praise God There's a link to it. She also has another song, which I might as well play it too. <laughs> oh, Lord. This is a beautiful song also. seen John for a few days, uh, Lord. Well, I have his email. I don't think he does email too much, though, Lord. Uh, he doesn't answer his email a lot, so... I would just wait till he comes back in here and you can communicate with him, okay? that testimony friend why would I get delivered to lose deliverance in the spirit why answer that why answer that question in a minute Paul. 
Courtney, I so appreciate what you've done, sis. I really do. I can honestly tell you, Courtney, you've made as much contribution to my soul as I have to yours. <laughs> honestly. Probably more. Well, I don't really recommend those channels in here, Louisa, because, because there's a lot of screwy stuff that goes on on them. And some of these people can't handle that. That's why I don't like people recommending channels on here. Because I know what's there. And that's what gets people messed up. Then I got to untangle them back, untangle them again. So that's why I don't. What's that one? Laura, did you get that? So I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that off, Davos. Okay. Let's not let's not be putting other channels up here. Okay. Let's just not do it. Lord Jesus, help us. Jesus, help us, Lord. No, I, I've been to that one he's talking about. It's a train wreck. Don't bother going there. It's a train wreck. That, that's, um, that's that Bethel stuff, I believe. If I remember right. I mean, if you're strong enough to go into those places and, you know, do some good for the gospel, that's one thing. But if you're just going in there casual, you'll get ate up. It's like, you know, John goes in there and, and, and probably Davos does too. But John goes in there and um, preaches the word and those people attacking. If you're not ready for that, don't. Don't go there. Don't do it. You know what you'll do? You'll come back asking me questions. This guy said that you can lose your salvation. This or that can't lose your salvation. This guy said that you can't come back to God. This guy said, then I got to spend all the time getting those wires wrapped out from around you again. Okay. So don't do it. Don't, don't waste our time with that. Okay. Let's keep going forward. Let's keep going forward in this. I tell you again and again and again, the Internet is a dangerous place, folks. It's a dangerous place. It's a very spiritually dangerous place. Uh, Laura, did you get that link, bro, for the testimony? I don't know if you answered me or not. All right, Yelitsa. Where's Lisa? Hey, Lisa. All right, Davos. They get wild. I've seen some wild stuff. Now, like I said, if you're a young believer, a confused person that, that, that can't find a way back, you should really limit your time on the Internet. I'm telling you. Yeah. And, and see, the devil has used this opportunity of, of social media to cause the field to be broader and the way to be broader. And... Um, 
he's done that to cause more confusion. Because at the tip of your finger, you could write, you could tip, you could write unpardonable sin on your computer, and you could find a thousand, if not ten thousand, different views of that. That's not good. See, that's that's not good. It's not good that it's at the tip of our fingers we can get confused that easily. It's not good. See, that's demonic. I mean, it's the say it's the say it's the age old thing. Why do you think there's all these denominations? Why do you think that you can go through a little town of five or six thousand and see you know a hundred churches? Why do you think why do you think that? It's to cause confusion. It's the same way out here in, in the internet world. You know, you can punch in anything and you can be anywhere in, in, a, in a millisecond. Into the land of confusion. Into the land of Oz in a few seconds. Yeah, I have two Davos. In fact, I'm thinking of one that's very common that there's witches on, but people don't know they're witches. They don't know they are. Because they've learned the last, they've learned the language and Christians are very gullible. All you have to do is say, amen, praise God, um, prayers, prayers for you. Um, it's like five or six catchphrases that they learn and they're in, man. They're right there in the fellowship, sitting right beside you, drinking coffee with you. Hey, let's worship together. You're worshiping with the with the table of Christ, with the table of demons. And you don't even know it because you haven't prayed for discernment. And they're and and you're you're not looking at the context clues. You're not looking at what they're saying saying between the lines. That's what you got to look at. Any devil can say praise God. Any devil can say, any devil can say hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Amen. They can say that too. They can say a lot of things. No, they can even say Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. That's right. They can make that statement. That's not what that verse means. That's right. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Selena. No, I wouldn't say that. Not from what I saw you saying earlier. Listen, friends, if, if if you if you prayed that prayer earlier with us, power of God was in that prayer. You know why? Because he instigated it. He engineered it. If you believe that, hunger is going to start in your heart. It's going to start in your heart. You're going you're gonna to wake up tomorrow morning a different person. Just that simple. Because that's what God has to do. See, it's a marvelous work. It's a work that he does. And it comes through that word that he speaks. Faith comes by hearing and hearing through the through the word of God. There you go, Selena. Now you're talking the right. Now you're talking the right talk. It does, Davos. It takes humility and that's what attracts God. You know what God's attracted to in you? Your neediness. Do You know what attracts the most powerful entity in the universe? Neediness. I need thee, O oh God. Oh, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Yes, Lord. Bless me now. My Savior, I come to Thee. That's right, April. You know, and here, I'm going to get something here for everybody. I want you all to read this again. You should read this once a week, by the way. There's a whole world out there. You know, uh, 
do you know that Courtney, you're in my head most of the time. <laughs> I, hear you, I hear you singing in my head all the time. I love it. Flower fading. Yeah. I don't know anything about that site. So I'm going to go back and try to find another one. Pentecostal Pioneers. That's it. That's a good one right there. Not secure. Can't use that one. Okay. Let's see. Which one did I use before? Maybe it was this one. Not secure. Oh, well. Can't use that one. No, I'm not searching for Bethel music. Look here, here. Watch this. Everybody, read this. You should read, read this. Read this once a week. Keep this link on your computer and read it once a week. I'm telling you, if you want to stay out of deception, read that prophecy. That is a prophecy from 1965 from a true man of God, and there, I have never seen anything more accurate. Never. In fact, I would put its accuracy at, at the top of the accuracy list of right up there with the vision, Wilkerson. Everyone should read it once a week. All right, Davos. Did Sean ever get that? I'm not Matthew, sure if he read Matthew it. Or not. Now, some of you may not understand it, but some of you will. It is confirmed. This is this particular thing is not Wilkerson Paul. This this is this is Stanley Prodsom. This is from '65. But the other thing I was talking about was Wilkerson's vision. Um, but th this is a prophecy about the church and about what would be coming into the church in the latter times. And wow. All I can say is, wow. It, it's many things that God has shown me over the years that I propagate. And then when I got that, I remember I read this several years ago, probably 30 years ago. And it, at the time, I was, it didn't really make that great an impact on me. But over the years, I've been preaching this same thing, and then I get this prophecy, and it was like, it was so directly spoken to me. Remember that day I found it again? It was like, man, this is like mm -hmm. confirming every single thing that God has shown me. Every single thing is confirmed in that prophecy. Astonishing to me. You know, maybe it won't mean to you what it meant to me, but it's a wonderful safeguard incredibly wonderful safeguard for 
this day and age we live in, perilous times. All right. All right. Praise God, Murph. That's awesome. All right. Three days. That's awesome. Where's Buddy tonight? Where's our fixture? Missing. Our fixture is missing. Yeah, I, I agree with that, Jimmy. It's there's something I call it mystical. Um, yes. <laughs> something mystical. It's almost like snake charming type stuff. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not good. It just. I cannot put my finger on it, but I can tell you, it's not. It doesn't. It doesn't set well in my spirit. There's some. There's some gyrations in the body and things going on that are not. Not good. It almost looks like trances they're in to me. And if you listen to the lyrics, it's all about people. It's not about God. Yes, Louisa, that's right. Very dangerous. Bethel, elevation, all that stuff. Very dangerous, folks. You should stay completely away from it. That's the advice of this pastor. Hey, Tina. Tina from Canada in the house. Hallelujah. Lisa missed a big prayer earlier, didn't she? She's going to have to watch the rerun. Yeah, I told her. Yulitsa, I'm watching you. Good to see you, Tina. Bless your heart. Alicia, we got to talk to you tomorrow, by the way, don't we? Is it tomorrow or the next day? It's Thursday or Friday. She's yeah, so I get to rebuke her face to face then. Awesome. Love you, Murph. Much love, much love. Mm. Oh, really, Shandy? They, they play that, huh? <clears throat> uh, it is uh, 8.30 here, Tina. Probably same time as you, huh? Leslie has the same time as us, I think, doesn't she? Is Leslie still here? Hey, Levi, what's up? Good verse, friend. <laughs> That's good, Yulitsa. Chuckling's good. You know, you know I'm, I'm rousing you. <laughs> But I may yell at you a little bit, but that's all right. It's because I love you. Oh, yeah, you are in a bad place, Paul. Mm. Amen, Jimmy. That's right, brother. That's right. Right here, Jimmy. And you know what? I feel a song coming on. I want it 
realize Celia was in Canada. Oh, she is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I forgot that too. What's going on out there, Nate? You feeding the dogs? We don't even have dogs. Sounds like pouring dog food in something. Oh, frozen. Elite, so did you just say what I thought you said? How? You said how, didn't you? How did you get him back? Is that what you said? Remember? We're not supposed to use that word in here. Hey, Logan. Amen. That's right, Paul. Praise God. Praise God, Bo. That's wonderful, friend. Praying for you, my friend. Believe me when I tell you that. Come thou fount of every blessing. To my heart to sing thy grace, streams of mercy never ceasing, calls for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious song, and sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it. Mount of thy redeeming love. Good to see you, Tina Campbell. All right, Jimmy Furrows. We believe you, Paul. Oh, really, Paul? Yeah, psychology. Mm -hmm. You know what? Most preachers do believe in that. I'd say 99.9% .9 of them. You know why I know that? Because in someone in your condition, they just tell you to quote scriptures. Well, that's psychology. Right? I mean, what do you expect? Magic? So you can't just quote scriptures. You can't quote yourself out of that condition. There's things that have to happen. There's things that you have to turn from. There's things you have to repent of. There's things that have to be dug out of you by the Holy Ghost. There's things you, there's, there's, there's strongholds that has to be overcome. You can't just talk yourself out of that. You can't fix the heart of mind, man through the mind of man. can't do it. Make the tree good, and its fruit will be good. Make the tree bad, and its fruit will be bad. There you go, Chris. Yeah, I mean, that she, she's been told that about a hundred times now. About a hundred times. Well, I, 
I think the thing here is you're saying as to act like a sudden dramatic tense moment and she's looking for someone who had that happen just like it did with her but she's not going to leave right see like we talked about earlier and i've talked with others i don't think that it's so much that suddenly the spirit of god departed as something else came in that's what i think has happened yes another spirit came in yes yeah of course the spirit of god left too right but it but, was probably grieved away before that right that's a very good point let, let me let me clear that up okay because Tess made a very good point unless she wants to come up here and clear it up good they probably heard me so remember the Bible says that no man could snatch you out of his hand and nothing can separate you from the love of God, right? We know those two verses. What does that mean? That means that there is no, no exterior force that can steal God from you. None. You have to leave him. It's Here's the way I look at it. Satan is like the trash man, right? He, he, he does, the trash man will come down my driveway and he cannot steal my trash. He doesn't have legal rights to it. Now, if I set my trash out on the curb, he can take whatever I put out there, you see. So, so Satan cannot steal anything from you. You have to set it out at the curb. Yes, exactly. You follow me? You can't. You can't just say, well, well, that that just got stolen. No, you gave it away. You put it out there. You ever put something accidentally in the trash that you should have kept? I've done it. But you know what? That, that guy has every right to it once I put it in that trash can and set it out there, doesn't he? And that's the way it is with Satan. He can't come down your driveway and steal your trash. You have to set it out there. Hey, Deborah, what's up, sis? That's right, Selena. That doesn't mean God quits loving you. But just because he loves you doesn't save you. You hear me? Just because God loves you does not mean that he will save you. Or, or, or is saving you. It means he will save you, but that doesn't make you saved because he loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believes on him, right? Hey, Logan. Well, 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 you leads it. That's but you, see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You cannot base having faith in God and coming back to God on whether or not you find another person with the exact same story. You have to take God at his word alone. That's right. You cannot look for a pattern or a cookie cutter. You can't do it. Because each one of us have our own roadblocks and stumbling blocks of iniquity. Each one of us are different. Each one of us has our own points of rebellion. Each one of us has our own sticky points with God. So this is why it takes longer with some people than others, because they're more rebellious than others. Because they have bigger, deeper strongholds than others. Yes, you can't base your hope on linking arms with another person who had the exact same past as you. No. What right. God says about your situation, what God offers to you, you have to take... God at his word, not at me telling you that it happened to me just like you did. Right. It, it's all twisted. That's right. And that's what people are looking for. Right. Exactly. You know, they're, they're looking to find that carbon copy. Right. That, companion, that trail. That a trail to follow. And, and see, they put their faith in that person, what that person says. And God is saying, believe in what I say. Forget about the word of man. Believe in what I say. That is what matters. Put your faith in me. Right. Because this isn't breadcrumbs. Right. I can't leave you breadcrumbs into the kingdom. Right. What I can tell you is that he can do it. 
And that if he done it for me, he can do it for you. And I can give you the word of God and his promises. But I cannot bring you through a trail. Right. You follow me? There is no pattern. That's why I hate the word how in here. Because it's it does it's there's no how. It's when will you relinquish your life? That's the question. The reason that you don't repent is because you don't want to. It's just that simple. So what if you feel that God isn't chastening you anymore? Does that mean that he isn't dealing with you anymore? No. But what do you mean? But what would you call chastening? Before I answer that question. We, we are very complicated creatures, folks. We're not we are cookie cutter people. Mm -hmm. right. Very complicated. Our lives have all taken different turns. We've all gone into different Absolutely. alleys. Of, Absolutely. I've spent more time in an alley of darkness than you have, right, on, maybe right. with alcohol. Right. Maybe yours was lust. Maybe right. maybe yours was pride. Maybe mine was jealousy. Mm -hmm. but, but we all have different places, right. different strongholds. Mine was jealousy. That was my strong man. Mm -hmm. And everything else kind of streamed out of that. Mm -hmm. You know, yours could be pride. Yours could be. It, it, see, folks, it's just we're complicated creatures. So for me to lay you out a pattern. Right. Um, and that's what I fear a lot of you are doing. You're jumping all over the Internet looking for that replica. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how he did it. So I'm going to. Where's that easy button? Right. Where's that easy button? See, that's a McDonald's mentality. There is no easy button. Mm -hmm. You see, it's an arduous, sweaty, bloody battle to come into the kingdom of God. So and, and, and you got to be willing to get a hold of it. With all of your heart. It'll help her. It's still here. And I hope she's no, I think she left. There's John. Love you, John. Hey, John. So what do you mean by that, Tina? What do you mean by warning or doing? He is trying to get you to turn to him, but you keep resisting and you hear nothing anymore. Well, you've just grieved him, Tina. You just grieved him. Mm -hmm. That's what that is. You grieved him. Did you hear what I was explaining earlier about the tug of war? This is a very good analogy. Listen to this. You, you played tug of war, right? You get the big burly rope. Yes. Got the red thing in the middle. Right? Yes. And whoever crosses the line loses. That's right. God is pulling on you. Yes. To come into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Right? He's on one side of the rope. You're on the other side of the rope, holding on to the world, pulling against him, striving with your maker. Okay, so he's pulling and he's calling and he's pulling and he's calling and he's pulling. And finally, he's like, you know what? This ain't working. I can't get her across the line. So he lets go of the rope. See, this is what it means to turn you over. And as I said earlier, it's not God sitting in heaven thinking, saying, well, you know what? I'm just going to turn that creature over to the to the to the reprobate mind and blah. Enough of them. What that means is he lets you have what you want. Because if you're resisting his righteousness and wanting to hold on to this world, you're burning his hands with that rope, and he has to let go. When he lets go, you sink back into sin. You see, that's that's not that's not mercilessness that's mercy because now God is letting you have what can destroy you so that you'll come back to him it's all a perfect orchestra the way he works it it's perfect Selena says I think Kenny it's just so alarming to be in this state and we all think we're worse than everyone else we search to see if someone else has experienced the same as us got him back well right selena but you know what what happens with that as i said 
Are you leaving, Deborah? That wasn't you in here very long. I do not, Paul. I'm, I'm, you probably won't find anyone more adamantly against it than me, actually. So what happens, Selena? You go around, you, you go, you start surfing around looking for that perfect pattern. That's my point, you know. Just stay right here. Listen to the word. God's feeding us. He's giving us. He's giving us some food. Getting some. I don't get paid for this. You know what I mean? I labor intensely before God for this because this is my calling so you can trust my heart in that because I have nothing in this I'm not gaining anything by this this is a calling and it goes out so stay here absolutely Tina but see, here's what you do when God gives gives you over to that, and then you have the rope in your hand, and you're you're over here with the rope, and you now you have the world, and and you you're losing out with God. You just got to drop that rope and say, you know what, God, forgive me for being hard hearted. Forgive me for 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 chasing after the things of the world. Please come back to me, and that's the only prayer you got, Tina. You don't have any other prayer. Lord, come back to me and grab the rope again and pull me out of this pit. That's, that's what you got. It's called the mercy card, sis. Yes, yeah, Selena, I went through that too, where I lost the conviction. I sure did. Absolutely. That's true, Selena. Very true. I'm just telling, I'm just saying it to those that are in here already and are part of this. You know, don't, there's no need to go anywhere. Now, I'm not saying there's nobody else out there that can help you, Selena. You know I'm not saying that. But I have found 99% of the time when people tell me about these other people, go check these people out. Go check. Kenny, I'm listening to this guy. And then I go check them out. I'm sorry to say, folks. I'm sorry to say, but it, there's there, there'll be like 90% and then there'll be that 10% Achilles heel in there. And this is why this is why the Stanley Fraudsome prophecy is so important that you read that. There you go. That's a good way to say it, Harvester. Did you set your quote, Harvester? That's a refrigerator quote for the day. Walking in truth to remain in the circle of salvation. I like that. Yeah, it just came to me. Did you see the harvester's quote there? That's stuff from the Lord. I'll put that up. There you go, John. That's the truth right there. And the state shall be worse than the first. But at the same time, that doesn't mean it's hopeless. It just means it's more difficult. That's all. It doesn't mean it's hopeless. It just means it's more difficult. And that's right, John. So let's get let's pray for, for Cynthia real quick. Father, we rebuke this spirit of fear that's trying to overcome Cindy in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, let your grace and your peace, your hunger. Your hunger come into Cindy right now. We come against this spirit of fear in the name of Jesus Christ. We agree in this room by the power that's in the name. You leave her alone. God set upon her with your heart. Your peace. 
Thank you, Jesus. That went out, sis. You like that, Allure? That's good stuff, isn't it, friend? That's the power of God. Yeah, me too, John. I can definitely testify to that. What's up, Donald? Sure good to have you, Tina. And it's good to have you too. Um, I forget his name already. I see a lot of names, don't I? He must have left. Hey, Bantu. What's up, Bantu? Paul. It's Paul. Nice to have you, Paul. Where'd you come from, Paul? Fred Guy, just smoking cannabis is sin. Absolutely, Fried Guy. 110%. Same thing happened to me, Paul. Yes, Shandy. There you go, sis. You pray whenever, yep. Yeah. You pray whenever that comes on you. That's that spirit of intercession. Oh, yes, Courtney. Absolutely, it did. Oh, you need to miss what we said then. It's hard to repeat. You leach it in? She just now come back, so yeah, she missed what we said. Oh man. Devil pulled her away, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so happy every time I listen to everyone here. It really helps me feel <laughs> good, Tina. Hope is what you need, sis. Listen, Tina, you need to watch the, the when we go off the air, you need to watch this from the beginning. I'm glad you're here, Paul. This is what this room is for, by the way. This room is for, um, we call it, Paul, we call it the Island of Misfit Toys. <laughs> and, I, and I'm one of them. Well, you know what, Paul? It, God uses things. Okay, He allows things um, to push us. In the right direction. So, Paul, if you didn't have the torment, you wouldn't have any concern for your soul, you see. So, God is allowing this. Um, in the book of Revelation, it talks about being cast into a bed of sickness, right? Because we're given space to repent. So, adversity is good, torment is good. Because if you didn't have it, you'd be complacent. And if you're complacent, you're lost. Trouble is a good thing. No, Bantu, it's not acceptable. Absolutely not. One should repent of such things. You believe there are people in our state who are happy? Well, that might be that might be a lure, but they're they're fooling themselves, right? They 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 pulled their. Oh, are you talking about people that are hopeful? I'm not sure what you mean there, friend. Well, there's Buddy he missed all the action again, didn't he? Buddy, you've been getting on the back of the bus lately. What's up, bro? Snap to it. Paul says, I am so worried. Well, good, Paul. I'm glad. I'm glad you're worried, friend. It's a good thing. He was at a Bible study. Does he have an excuse note for that, Louisa? Did you see it? I 
cowboy hat. I don't think people would take me serious, Donald, if I wore a cowboy hat. Well, you know what? That it could be a good excuse. It could be a bad one too. It depends on how the Bible study went. <laughs> Depends on if they preach truth or not, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I've been to some pretty bad Bible studies. I wish I'd never went to. It, you know what I call them? Bible trying to figure out meetings. Bible trying to figure. It's not Bible study. It's Bible trying to figure out meetings. And it's just a bunch of people hashing over the Bible trying to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, they they are Louise. If I if I was in Texas, I might just wear me one of them their hats. So what if, what if, what did you say if you're if what do you say it meant if you're not in torment anymore? Well, if you're not in torment, then that just means the devil's got you. Good, you just got a good hold on you. If you're trying to make an effort toward God, then the torment will start again. You see, but when you're when you're out just being complacent, then that means those devils have calmed down. You start looking towards God again; they start pulverizing you again. I mean, I got examples all around me. People start coming to church, right? Then all of a sudden, the next Sunday, there's ten thousand uh, problems in their life. Well, I can't come because I got to do this and I got to do that and I got to do this and now I can't do this and I got. I say, look, kingdom of God suffers violence, man. If you're going to come in, you got to come in before us. Donald, don't say that stuff in here, bro. Don't do that, okay? That's not funny in my book. All right. Bernice says, Kenny, is there a possibility? You know what, Bernice? I wouldn't even ask that question. That 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 question was put in your head by the devil, says. Cast it down. Cast it down. Because if I answer that question one way or the other, you're just going to doubt it anyway. So just cast that one down. Okay. You know what, Bernice, let's suppose he never does. Let's just say that he never does. Should you still seek him the rest of your life? You know? Because he's worthy. He's worthy. Well, Yulitsa, that could also, listen, that could also be that God's given you a little reprieve too. Okay, don't forget that. Sometimes God will give you a little, he'll give you a refreshing, a little bit of moment to breathe. That might be what you're getting. I have seen that happen. It's all right, Donald. Just don't, we just don't say stuff like that here, okay? Because there are people in here that are struggling and coming out of that stuff. And, you know, I just don't want to be frivolous about it, okay? A lot of activity. Man. A lot of activity tonight. Yeah, Shandy, it sounds like you got a, an attack there. Well, knee's good. good. Discomfort's good, says you just keep you keep seeking. You keep knocking. Don't you give up.
Really? Well, that's because you was going to come on here, buddy. He wanted to make you come on here without any expectancy. But we had a good prayer earlier, buddy. You need to watch it from the beginning, brother. Because God set it up for someone like you. That's why I was so disappointed you wasn't here. Because it was a perfect moment for you. And um, go back and watch it. Pray the prayer. Enter into it. Just pretend it's live. And uh, you just watch what God does. Yeah, that's a good verse, John. It is. It's a very good verse. And you got to remember that. Well, let's talk about that because on your way back to God, you're going to skin your knees a few times, brothers. You're going to skin your knees. It's going to be rough. But God is going to see you through. <clears throat> because he's going to complete what he started. Nathan, did you make me some popcorn? Smells like you made me some popcorn over there. You can put it in a bowl. Can't you? Whatever you like, I suppose. There you go, Courtney. That's a good way to put it. I really like the verses John's posting. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, John, ever since ever since I showed him the, the copy and paste, he's just gone hog wild with it. <laughs> he's fought a lot of battles with it. Yeah, you you have to see it this time. Yes, it was told ahead of time when it was prophesied I would be popcorn. All right, Elite. We're gonna be talking to you tomorrow the way. Sure. Thank you. Let the weak say I am strong. I'll call on a Jezebel. I gave up. Then I got lonely, started drinking wine with friends. Soon behind came Jezebel. Passed. I wanted to have come to the Lord. Yep. There you go, Paul. Yes, sir. No, oh, I know what else I wanted to read. Mm. 
Well, what's she going to do? You know what, Paul? It's the same thing I had to do. I had to get out of my old stomping grounds because of the powers. The darkness told me was moving my harvest field, Paul. So I had to leave. If I wouldn't have left, Paul, I wouldn't have survived. So sometimes you have to move, yes. You know what, Bernice? This may seem like a funny answer to you, but the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Um, let me tell you a little story, Bernice. Okay? I'm going to tell you a little story. So, whenever I was first converted, this was within the first week of my conversion. Um, well, first couple days of my conversion. And I was kind of spotty reading the reading the Bible here and there, you know, trying to make some sense of it and having some real struggles. I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, but I did not, I couldn't seem to get a grip on things. And I remember sitting at the table, my mom and dad's table, I was by myself that day. They were gone and I was sitting at their table saying, God, I, I really want to, I'm so hungry for this, but I just can't seem to get it. It was like foreign language to me, you know. And um, I felt that I should go to the book of James, Bernice. The book of James is a very, very simple, very simple, plain spoken book. And I started reading it the first chapter, Bernice. James, a servant of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. All Greek. It was all Greek to me, meaning I understood none of it. I remember being frustrated, like, well, that don't make no sense to me. Well, I didn't even have any trials yet, so it, it wouldn't make any sense to me. I was newly born again. But then I got to the fifth verse, Bernice. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men freely, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. And when I read that, Bernice, as sure as, as sure as I'm sitting here, I heard the Holy Ghost speak to me for the first time in a very powerful way. Ask me for wisdom. It's a true story, sis. So in my simple heart, you know, brand new Christian, knew nothing about the things of God. I looked up to the sky with my eyes, up to the ceiling, and I said, all right, give me wisdom. 
And the best way I can explain it to you, Bernice, is is like the book landed on top of my head, went clear through my body. And it was like the wisdom, the literal wisdom of heaven came into my being. And then I could fully understand the book. And I got baptized in the Holy Ghost again there at the table. And I remember having such understanding of the Bible after that, Bernice. And to this day, to this day, the understanding that I have came from that moment. That's all I can tell you. Um, because before that, I didn't know anything. I wasn't even an educated person. I was an old, I was an old uh, flooring guy that was uneducated, barely made it out of high school, a drunk. So when I got saved, and and everything that I know, it all came from that moment. So every good and perfect gift cometh down from above, from the Father of lights, in whom there's no variableness or shadow of turning. Praise God. So yes, Bernice, do the same thing. Just ask the Lord for the spirit of wisdom. So, you know, you don't need any commentaries. You don't need any. Um, you don't need any, any any aids. People buy these Bibles and stuff that have commentary in them, which I'm not against it. I'm not against commentary, but you have to be careful that you're not. It's kind of like this. Here's the way I look at commentary. It's kind of like formula instead of breast milk. It's kind of like. It's, it's, it's like a substitute for the Holy Ghost. And commentaries can be good if it's in the right setting. If you're just looking for a meaning of a word or perhaps somebody else's take on something. Uh, but you can get yourself in trouble with commentaries very easily. Because you're getting the interpretation of someone else. So you, you must be very careful not to depend on formula but only the breast milk only that which comes out naturally and that's the holy ghost the holy ghost will teach you all things he's the spirit of truth and he will guide you into all things Oh, Cindy, I left my old my old turf where I, I see I, I moved out of there when I got saved. And when I backslid, I moved back there like a dog returns to its vomit. And I engaged in all that stuff again and back into my old sin. And uh, then when I got when I come back to God, I had to get out of there I had to leave. That's a good way of putting it, Dave. Now, I do like Matthew Henry commentary. Um, some things, some things I don't, you know. And there's there's, um, there's all kinds of commentaries you can go to, but there's nothing like when the Holy Spirit. Nothing like when the Holy Spirit divulges truth to you that you can't, you can't. It's indelible. It doesn't go away. It's forever. Um, commentaries I have a ten I have a tendency to forget what they said. Davis. I like this verse, Bernice. Let me get it.
See, what I received that day, Bernice, was the anointing of God. The, the Spirit of the Lord came upon me and divulged that truth to me. It wasn't anything within myself. It was a gift. So here's what. Here's the verse that you should go off of when you're when you're trying to learn truth. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. You need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you all things and is truth and is no lie. And even as it had taught you, you shall abide in him. Now, that, that does not mean verbatim that you will never have anyone teach you anything. But it simply means that it has to come through the spirit. That it is the anointing that breaks the yoke. So if you listen to a teacher, make sure that it's the gift of teaching and operation, that it's coming through the Holy Spirit and not just an opinion. That's 1 John 2.27. First John two twenty seven. Paul says self control is not present. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, Paul. I've been there. What what did what did you uh, Leaving Judy. <clears throat> Love you, sis. Thank you for those words today. Really made a difference to us. Well, listen, Paul, is there anybody you have to go you have to go to and forgive? Or or tell them you're sorry that you held them in prison? Are you keeping somebody in prison, Paul, in your mind? And that's why you've got the tormentors. You know the verse, right? You know what I would suggest, Paul? I would suggest you go back right down through the list. Right down through the list. I'm sorry I've kept you in prison. Forgive me. <coughs> In fact, Paul, that's going to be a requirement for you to come back. Even if you just have to do it by phone or by letter or whatever, um, do all you can.
ड्राइवर What do you mean, Paul? You mean you got abandoned by people? Is that what you're saying? Believers? Was it believers? Thinking of a message for you, Paul. Thinking of a message that I, I put up here on YouTube some time ago. I'm gonna I'm gonna go get it for you, friend. I think it's gonna help you. Message out there, Paul. Yeah, Dave, I was, I, I, I was telling you, I think I got the interpretation of your dream, friend. Yeah, Priscilla, I've been here for three and a half hours. Mm-hmm. You want me you want me to say it here or you want me to send it to your email, Davos? Or I could text it to you. Let me text it to you. Do you have his number? I think I do, but I'm confused because Michael. Okay, I'll email it to you. Yeah, I got it today in prayer. I wasn't even thinking about it, and it came to me. What, what's your? Can you text me something, Davos? Because I think I got your. I don't know if I got your new number on my phone, my new phone, or your number on my new phone. All right, Allure. I hope you were touched by God tonight, friend. What is it, Harvester? Mm -hmm. Smile once in a while. I can't quit texting, typing. Oh, okay. I thought you had it, Davos. I could give it to him on Messenger. Yeah, Michael will send it to you. I think he's driving, though. I can send it to you right now on email.
There you go, friend. Told my pastor and a friend that I was feeling alone. Vulnerable pastor said, get a dog. Are you serious? <laughs> get a dog. It's the last thing you should have done. Dogs are a problem. Mm. Did you get the dog, Paul? Oh, I believe you will too, Allure. Um, you were here. You were here for the prayer, right, friend? You prayed that prayer and believed it. God's going to do it. Oh, I just asked if you did get the dog. I said that's the last thing you should have done. Was got a dog? I said dogs are dogs are high maintenance. Dogs limit you in so many ways, man. Oh, you didn't get it? Good. Not only that, they can bring devils in your house, too. Yeah, you was, Paul. Absolutely. Did you get that link, Paul? It's a good message I think you should watch. Oh, how so? Well, Courtney, if they can live in dogs or pigs, they can certainly live in dogs, can't they? See, I believe that's a lot of, a lot of the reason that, well, that's a whole other story. I think a lot of times we think we're, um, we're helping ourselves. You know, when, when we're actually causing another habitation, I mean, that's just what I see. Call me crazy. I don't care. Like I said, if they can live in eggs, they can certainly live in dogs. Courtney, I think we're tricked in a lot of ways uh, as humans to think that I think we're tricked in a lot of ways. I really do. I think we bring things into our house with good intentions or with other motives and, and they are they're detrimental. That's all I'll say about that. All right, Davos. Let me program you in. Okay, bro.
We're cool. Cool. You got it. Yeah, I'm, yeah, but I'm crazy. You know, I, I, when I say crazy, I mean that. I mean, I'm a little, uh, I'm a little eccentric, a little different than most people on things. But a lot of these things I've just seen over the years with experience, and uh, um, I just know what I see. That's all I can say. You know? <clears throat> This house, I did not want to be in. I was forced back here. I knew devils were in this house. Well, you know, the thing about praise and worship, they can sometimes they can they can back the devils off, but that doesn't remove them. You know, they don't they don't like to hear praise and worship. Just like, well, how do you know that, Kenny? Well, remember Saul had a troubling spirit from the Lord, and David played the harp. David played the harp. Praise and worship. And those devils left him alone for a little bit, but didn't remove them. They came right back. See, they just—you can't remove them with with that. You have to, you have to remove their legal right. All devils have legal rights to be where they're at. Through either a generational thing. Um, what your mom and dad, you know, might have engaged in, um, in the family, and you being around that influence. A lot of them come in through Masonic powers, you know, the Masons. Uh, there's all kinds of ways that spirits can get into a family. But um, especially drugs. Now, th a lot of these, these prescription drugs, folks, are just simple gateways. I'm just going to put it out there. Point blank. Gateways. You now you see the little commercials with the little guy following you around. You know, he's a little happy guy, follows you around and makes sure everything's cool. That's the demon. See, that's what that's what um, we do nowadays. With all the depression and everything, we throw pills at it. Just throw pills at it. Oh, you can't cope with this. We got a pill for that. Oh, you can't cope with that. We got a pill for that. Oh, take this yellow one. Take this blue one. Take this red one. Pfizer said it was. They done laboratory tests. I mean, yeah, you might have suicidal thoughts with it, but hey. It'll it'll do some good. God help us. Really, Paul, that's interesting. You know, just because it's a compressed form and a cute little thing with a name stamped on it don't mean it ain't any different than you sticking a needle in your arm with heroin. No different whatsoever. It's just because it comes through a white coat. Sorcery, folks. God help us. Yes, Shandy. Because we don't know what to do with folks. You know, we don't know how to handle them. We don't know how to deal with the unruly minds of humanity. So we, we just dope them up. But there's a lot of people that... Well, it is, Paul. It's 110% an oxymoron. Yeah, those two things don't go together, about like water and oil. It's shameful, Paul. It truly is. It's shameful. When people have these big holes in their soul and they can't figure out why they don't have no emotions, why they can't, they can't find nowhere, you know, they can't get a hold of nothing. It's because, it's because some peddler talked you into taking something.
we've substituted, we've tuned out other cisterns that can hold no water. Instead of depending on the power of God. Yeah, there you go, Bernice. It is shameful. And, you know, years ago when I was, well, I'll give you an example. Years ago, I was trying to quit smoking. This was back when I was backslidden. I thought, well, I would have these panic attacks and feel like I was going to die. So I was like, well, okay, I got to get rid of the cigarettes because it's killing me. I wanted to quit them. So I went to the doctor, man, I want to quit these. I want to, well, I got, I got something here that will help you. And it was samples. I didn't even have to pay for it. How convenient, right? It was called. Uh, hmm, can't remember the name of it. Well, anyway, I started taking it. So I thought, well, you know, it's going to help me kick smoke it. Didn't say anything about it. He just gave it to me. And I took it, and all of a sudden, my hands started getting all sweaty. And I started freaking out. And it was like out in the yard pacing like a wild animal. Like uh, uh, something like that, Courtney, but it wasn't that. And it would, I was out and I was out there pacing like a wild animal, sweat, sweat beads coming out of my forehead. I was like, man, I'm freaking out here. Well, it turns out it was an antidepressant. And I didn't know that. I looked, I went and looked it up somehow. You know, this was clear back in the 90s. I looked it up and, and it was, uh, sure enough, it was antidepressant. I was like, what? I remember that. You remember that? Oh, yeah. I was right there. And I believe a devil went in. I believe that's that's why I was having those symptoms. I believe I opened up myself to a devil. 110%. But see, I was looking to another source. See, this is the, this is the issue. When you look to another source to deal with your problems, besides God, you are looking to Satan. Because God is the purifier of the heart and the cure for the soul and the stabilization of the mind. It's all done through the spirit. Now, if we go through an alternative means to make that happen, you are in Satan's territory. You are looking to another God. Just that simple. Oh, okay. Hey, Michael made it home. That's right, Bernice. That's why they're dangerous because when you lose feelings, you know, you lose feelings, you can do, you can, you don't have any emotions, then you lose conviction, right? You lose conviction, you can do things that you shouldn't do. All right. Good night, Courtney. Love you, my dear sister. Thank you for blessing us with that music, always. And letting me use it. Paul, it's been good to have you, friend. Yep. There you go, Paul. There's proof right there. Like Tess said, she used to take the, um, years ago, she took the uh, Prozac. 
He said, Kenny, the only way I can explain to you is you turn into a zombie. He said, yeah, you don't have bad feelings, but you don't have good ones either. No. That's just like. Nope. Like a mannequin. Yeah. I don't know how that happened. But you take this silly little round thing and your emotions are gone. Right. So what does that tell you? Scary. Spiritual. Scary. It's 100% spiritual. Absolutely, Paul. I would say the same thing for me, Paul. That was my problem also. Mine was toward the church, you know. Okay, Lord. Took you a little while to get off the landing pad, huh? It's all right. Well, you know what, Shandy? I pray God turns that around tonight as he promised that he would. Gives you a new hunger for his word. And again, Shandy, go to James chapter 1. Read that. Believe it. Believe it. You know, ask God. I want this wisdom. You gave it to Kenny, and the Bible says that you, that you give it liberally. Right? He has given it to you. Good. That's awesome. You certainly are understanding some things. Yeah. James, book of James. Have you read it? Yeah, you need to read that book, Shandy. That's a good that's a good one. Read that first chapter and just take it for what it says, you know. Just believe it. Uh, okay, Paul, I'm following you, friend. I'm following you. So do you, do you still have that in your heart, Paul? Do you feel you still have that? Well, you're getting somewhere, Shandy. That seems to happen a lot, Paul. I've seen that a lot in this chat room, actually. Oh, you mean where they, they, they get different, they all get the same wage, Michael? You know, one worked a couple hours, one worked all day. It's a good one, isn't it? Did you say Michael's home? Mm-hmm. I knew it would destroy. Right. Right. It talks about the immediacy of God's mercy, doesn't it? So, Paul, let me ask you this. Is this marriage still salvageable or has she moved on?
I am thine, Lord, and I have heard thy voice, and it told your love to me. All right, Tina. Much love to you, dear sister. Good to have you here. But she is not a believer. Well, okay, sis. We'll be here. Hey, Daniel, what's up, friend? So, Paul, are you able to, you think you're able to go back and, and at least say, uh, at least uh, forgive? You think you could go back and forgive? Um Well, I mean, I know it's necessary, but. All right, Shandy, cool, cool beans. Strong, I'm right at the four hour mark. You did forgive? All right, Paul. So you ain't holding nobody in prison right now, right? Beautiful, Shandy. You pray that prayer, sis. You watch what happens. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying it'll happen just like it did for me, but you watch. Yeah, he did, Michael. He was he was beat. He's got Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off, though. Well, sure, sure, Shandy. Absolutely, dear. Absolutely. Doing good, Daniel. How are you, friend? Yeah, when she gets restored, she can come on and help other people that are not yet restored, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. You can come on and help restore. When did prayer worry leave? I didn't know he left. I didn't see him leave. He probably left when Jimmy does. He usually goes out at the same time. Well, I was telling Tess today, I just love the way she preaches. Love it. Something about her her way of or directness, but yet, I don't know. My audacity? No, it's just a straightforwardness. <laughs> okay. It's good stuff. I don't want to sound mean. Oh, not at all. No. You don't sound mean. Okay. No, you sound very emphatic.
Well, I hope so, Shandy. That's what it's all about. I hope that I, you know, can convey his heart through the spirit. That's that's what I live for. Because it doesn't matter what I think, does it? It doesn't matter. And you know what, Shani? That's available for anybody. God can use anybody. And wants to use everybody for his purpose. Hello, Daniel. Daniel Lightly. Yes, I missed him. Yeah, I, I love it when Tess is in the mix. Right, Paul. Yep. Same thing with me, brother. I mean, it's the same thing with me. Um, I came out of that. I was I was in it for 10 years, Paul. Backslider for 10 years. Backslidden preacher for 10 years. And unbelief, bitterness. Done. If you could have seen me then. Yeah. Done. Mm -hmm. See, there's those big boats on the river, you know, the big barges. Big barges are in the bay or wherever they are. And they're going up river and they unload their cargo and they got to turn around and go back. Well, it takes those little boats, those little tugboats, they call them. You know, they'll push on them or pull them. That nose or back around. Get it facing back down the river. It's a slow process. And sometimes God has to you know, push you and pull you a little bit, get you turned around because mm -hmm. um, like, you're a big ship and you're going your own way. And God wants you to go back down the stream. He has to do some pulling on you. There are depths of love. Yeah, I believe that, Paul. I believe that, friend. It's, it's all over the place, but I'm sure it's probably worse up there. Right, Paul. You, you know. You know what you're talking about. Very true, Priscilla. Got to be careful what you put in your head, what you allow to go. And that's why I say that the, the Internet's very dangerous for people because of its navigational allure. Its navigational allure is very alluring. I'll give you an example, Priscilla. <clears throat> now I, can, I consider myself pretty solid pretty solid um, doctrinally. Not, not saying that I own every corner of it. Not saying that. But I consider myself pretty solid. Well, I used to watch um, Christian television. This has been a few years ago. And I would watch it on the basis of, of just recognizing the false, you know. And just seeing what kind of trends they were promoting and, and what was being taught so that I could better teach out of that. I could be aware. And I remember when God very, very strictly dealt with Tess and I about the television. And how he wanted us to remove it from our premises. 
And I'm not talking about the actual TV because we have one right there that we, we play the YouTube on. But that's all. We don't have cable. We play Christian videos and that's it. Preaching, music, period. Oh, we got wrecked, destroyed. Our, that's yeah, so we just, that's Nathan's television, actually. But anyway, so God told us to get rid of the cable. And I took the televisions out and shot with shotgun. But anyway, I would watch the, that Christian television as a, and I, and I didn't watch anything. You know, I didn't watch any R-rated stuff or anything like that, but it was it was the preoccupation of that television that God said, you got to get rid of it. And I'll tell you, once I did, the peace that settled down in this house was mm -hmm. like tenfold more. Yeah. No more confusion, no more squawk box. Wonderful. So anyway, my point was, I, you know, I said, Lord, why, why don't you just, why don't I keep it just so I can watch these this Christian program. He said, Kenny, they ain't never changed. They've been preaching the same thing for years and years and years. They just changed their tactics, but it's the same message. Think about it. And I did. I thought about it. I thought, yep, yeah, you know what? They just changed the title of it. You know, it's a year of this and a year of that and a year of this and a year of that and 10 points to this and 10 points to that. And I thought, you know what? He's right. They ain't changed the message. Ain't nothing new under the sun. So we got rid of it. So anyway, I was astounded, Priscilla, at what. How much, even though I didn't believe those things, those doctrines, how much they had an effect on me. And lessening what I believed. Made me question more what I believed. And I didn't realize it until they were gone. And the doctrine come up to full strength. And it was like, it's like, right. wow, I was having an effect on me and I didn't know it. it so this is what I'm saying. You can't just get out there and put your ears up to everything. Mm -hmm. So many people floating around all these chat rooms, you're making a big mistake. That's what's keeping you back from fullness. Right. You can't just go anywhere you want. Don't work like that. You got to guard your heart and mind with the word of God. With good solid teaching, you should never hang out anywhere that's soft on sin and makes excuses. Yeah, anywhere that makes excuses for sin, you better run from it. Well, you know, you'll be doing it the same as yourself. <clears throat> Boy, it does, Paul, and I deal with it every single day. Every single day. You know what it's like, Paul? This is what I just pictured. I grew up on the farm. You know, we had old shaggy dogs out there on the farm. And I don't know if you know what a cockle burrow is, burr is, but it's a big old burly round burr that gets in your on your clothes. Well, it gets in a you know on a cow or a horse or a dog. Old dogs go out there and run them fields along the along the creek and come back to the house and just be full of them things. All matted up in them. I'd have to get out there and pull them out of their ears, pull them off the fur and throw them off to the side. And they weren't they weren't painful, but they were annoying. They just ball up on your clothes. Especially if you wore any knit of any kind out there in the woods, you come back with them things all over you. And that's what it's like if you go out navigating in the internet. You come in here and I got to pull them burrs back off of you. Takes time. Well, such and such said this. Such and such said that. Such and such. And it's after I've told them 10, 12, 15 times, don't do it. And they still do it. So what, what, you know, what can I do? I guess I'll just keep telling them.
Amen. Shandy sure is. She's, she sure is catching fire, isn't she? That girl's hungry. Well, I'll try to answer him, Shandy. I'll try. Family first. Family first. So what's the word about? Well, we've been talking about a lot of things family first. But I say God first. I can pretty much figure it out, Paul, but Michael. Hey, Elite, see you back. I don't know, Yulitsa. I mean, so much is said in here. <laughs> I don't remember everything. What's up, Brent? Homie? What's up, Home Slice? <laughs> Not being chastened anymore. The spirit just left my body. She must have missed what was said about that. Yeah, you did miss what was said about that. Josh made a very good point on that. You'll have to go back and watch it, Elisa. Oh, I know. You ain't tell me nothing. I know it full well. You're talking, you're looking at somebody with one of the hardest hearts that ever was. Tess can tell you. I was not a nice life. man. No, you weren't. Very hard hearted person.
I know, Michael. I know it. So if you ain't making devils mad, you ain't doing something right, right? You know what? Oh, that's when I got converted, 1985. That's very interesting. How long did you walk with God before you backslid, Paul? So I got converted in 80, 85 and backslid about 93. And then came back about oh one. About fifteen years. Mine was about well, I guess mine was close to ten years. Mine, I think mine was yeah, it was oh three. Oh three when I came back. So it was ten years. So you was fifteen years. You walked with God for fifteen years and then you backslid. Gotcha. I think you're our own, only only uh, Oregonite. Is that how they say it? Oregonite. Oregoner. Oregoner. Yeah, Paul. I wish you could watch my testimony. Oregonian, there you go. That sounds better. Yeah, there you go. Oregonian. Sounds more official, doesn't it? Oh, really? How long were you married, Paul? Fifteen years. Were you married before that, Paul? How long was you married the first time? I know I'm being nosy. I'm trying to get to know you. Paul, if you come here at any time, you'll find out we're very transparent in this channel. We talk about everything. Oh. Okay. So, so what was her divorce based on, Paul?
No, she never told you why she got divorced, huh? That's interesting. In 15 years, she never told you that. But then you found out later. Wow. That's a red flag. Hey, Eloy. Hello, friend. Good to see you, friend. So let me ask you something, Paul. Do you think do you think that was a legitimate marriage in the sight of God? I mean, since you don't know why she got diver divorced, suppose she suppose she committed adultery. Let's just say she did, and then they got divorced because of that. See, that could have delegitimized your marriage, you know. Was it was it a was it a pretty calm marriage, or was it typically volatile? The reason I'm asking you all this stuff, by the way. <clears throat> no to which, Paul? Was it, was it volatile or calm? You going to sleep, Harvester? Uh -uh. I mean the I mean the mer the the marriage itself, Paul. How did it go? Fifteen years was it mostly rocky or mostly tranquil? Volatile. So looking back, Paul, do you think you should have married that situation? Ah. Uh. Really? Wow. Well, there you have it, friend. There you have it. Oh. Looks to me like the Lord took care of it for you. That's what I think. Hey, Kathleen. What's that? Is Sandy leaving? No, she was. I think she thought you were. Oh. She thought you was drifting off to sleep. Four and a half hours, Kathleen. Hi, Kathleen. Hello, Eloy. <laughs> no, Kathleen, two nights ago, it was seven hours. Tess, uh, Tess, 
was on for two or three, Nathan said. I don't know. Yeah, two or three. You getting them messages? I'm about to. Yeah, I couldn't believe it, Kathleen. You know, the first night I was on here, eight hours, I think. We had a good time in here tonight, Kathleen. It was uh, it was good. We got Paul here. Paul's new with us. He's a uh, he's another backslider that uh, seeking restoration. So I told him, "Welcome to the island of misfit toys." Well, you know what, Paul? Um, there's a verse, and I think you probably know the verse. All things work together for the good. Sometimes God takes us full circle where we were supposed to start, Paul. And we, make, we get off the path. God brings us around full circle. Because it's still about his glory. And it's still about your calling. And it's still about him getting glory out of your life. It's not about him making you happy or making me happy. It's about him being glorified in your life. And if you guys take you around full circle to bring that about, then here you are. So you're right where you need to be, friend. Where God can consume you now. For our God is a consuming fire. Well, I don't typically do that, um, Priscilla. I, I don't typically do that. You can do that yourself. Well, I haven't been talking the whole five, four and a half hours, Kathleen. <laughs> I've been staring at the screen a little bit. Yeah, Michael's quoting stuff up there anyway, so. I am. Good stuff. Yep, that's right. That's good stuff. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wine got gotcha. you. Yes, sir. Oh, I love those verses, Michael. That's some good stuff. Uh, that's some hard preaching, isn't it? From Paul the Apostle. Good stuff, man. Praise God. You know what? I will read something, uh, uh, Priscilla, out of Philippians, though. It's not random, though. Right, Paul. Right. Yeah, he gets you with that old thing, didn't he? Got you with that. And you know what? You probably heard that from some believer, some, some preacher somewhere, didn't you? Well, all things in moderation, Paul. Have yourself a glass of wine. Loosen up a little bit. Don't be so religious. Don't be so tight. Yep. It's all through the church. Yep. I'm glad to see you change your name there, God first.
might take me a minute to figure out who you are. Yeah, that's right. You've told that story, didn't you, Davos? Wine is a mocker. Think about that statement. Wine is a mocker. It mocks you. <clears throat> He's in Oregon, Kathleen. He's your next door neighbor, pretty much. Praise God, Cindy. I don't doubt it, sis. You're going to come through. R remember, uh, remember, Cindy, when I told you earlier about the sun and the clouds? Did you hear me talk about that? Right, have moments where the sun, you know, like on a partly sunny day where you're, you're, you're out driving or whatever outside and then the sun disappears. Just kind of, you can feel the temperature change and coldness set in. And then all of a sudden you see the rays start to come out around them clouds and then pop. There it is. You have moments like that, sis. It, it's hard to explain moments of sun bursts and then moments of clouds and you're going to find Cindy that it's all blending together to work this thing called your faith it's you know uh, trials worketh patience and that word there is implying like dough being worked you know needed God brings you through that darkness. Boy, you just get stronger on the other side, Cindy. What you just came through tonight is to strengthen you. To make you more tenacious. To make you more of a bulldog. Fighting into the leather called God. You're not going to let go, sis. And he's not going to let go of you. But you got to come through these, these tryings. To see where your heart is. To see if your heart is fully involved in the flames of God. Or if you're... If you're, you know, if you can be bumped back, if you can be shrunk back into perdition. And these times are for to, to, these these waves beating upon the, the, the bow of your ship is to test that. Because harder times are coming for us all. And if your ship doesn't have, it's not storm proof, um, you won't make it. So thank God for these trials that you're going through, sis. I mean, it's it's something to watch. Um, it's no fun to be in them. No chastisement for the present seemeth to be joyous, but afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness in them who it is exercised thereby. So what is the peaceable fruit of righteousness? It is the preference of God that you now have in your heart. Over those things that are coming against you. When your heart begins to prefer God. Your heart gets stronger. No here at the Y I'm choosing to go with Jesus. Here at the Y I'm choosing to take a right and go with Jesus. I'm not going back that way. It makes the next Y a little stronger. When you get to the next Y you get a little bit stronger. A little more determined to take the turn. And um, I don't know why I'm telling you all this. But that's what that's what's going on, sis. This faith has to be tested, tried, but work with patience. Praise God. He's faithful. Can I confess to God because of COVID I can't go? Sure, sure, Pennywise, absolutely. Think it not strange, brother, concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. Those same some strange things happen to you. I 
How about something out of Philippians? Would you like to hear something out of Philippians, Cindy? Encouraging word. It was on my heart earlier. Yeah, you shrunk back, didn't you, Paul, at that did that testing? Beautiful, Cindy. God is making you steadfast, dear. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. What a faithful God. But those things which were gain to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless I count all things loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. And this is what we preach. And this is what we preach on the corner of this room, on the sidewalk. That all things are dung, besides knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. And be found in him. What does it mean to be found in him? See, what does that mean? Is that just some presupposed position that God puts us in? It's deeper than that. It's more complex than that. It's more profound than that. It's not just saying, know who you are in Christ. That's foolishness. That's just actually being found in him. When God looks for you. He finds you in the depths of this Christ. When God looks for Kenny, I want him to find nothing but this Christ. That's what Paul's saying. I've lost all things. I've lost all my own righteousness. I've lost all my own my accolades. I've lost all my own purpose. I've lost all my own drive. I've lost all my own dreams and all my own aspirations, all my own ambitions. Count them, but dung. For this one thing, that I may win him. That I may know him. Be found in him, having, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness, which is of God by faith. You know what that is? That's not supposed righteousness. Not magical righteousness. God looks through some kind of special screen and sees you as righteous. That's foolishness. That righteousness is actual, bona fide, glorious virtue of Jesus Christ in the inner man that makes you clean, that makes you purified. Blessed are the pure in heart. They shall see God. The righteousness which is of God, that I might know him, That I may know him. You see that's the purpose of the gospel. Purpose of the gospel is not blessings. The curse of the, 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 the purpose of the gospel is not to avoid hell and to make heaven. Although those are our, all, all after effects. Or, or, or what we would call. Um, it's the word I'm looking for. Not after effects. Cause and effect. Byproducts. Heaven's a byproduct. Avoiding hell is a byproduct. But you know what the prime product is? That I may know him. You see. That I may know him. Let us cast aside the pie in the sky ideology. Oh, when we all get to heaven. What a day of... Let's cast that aside, folks. 
Let's take now what God has provided for us. The glorious riches in Christ Jesus. That which is behind the veil, which is given to us now, which has been provided by blood. If God is, is going to grant to us the glorious riches in Christ Jesus, in the here and the now, we're not talking about getting your bills paid. We're not talking about getting you some new threads. We're talking about getting you some new shoes. We're talking about the spiritual riches that's in the revelation of him. That God, in his infinite mercy, allows us to, be, to, to actually let God be volumized within us. Actually exploded within our very temple. The essence of God and the virtues of Jesus Christ to live in this temple. We have this treasure in earthen vessels so that the excellency of the power might be of God and not of man. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. The power of his resurrection. That which brings everything else to life. What Paul was talking about. This is what I want. The power to bring everything. The life of God on the inside of you. Not talking about when you die. Talking about now. Bringing you back to life. Quickening your mortal body. Giving you the very strength of the spirit. The fellowship of his sufferings. Oh, do you know what that is, children? Do you know what it's like to fellowship with him in his sufferings? Do you know that the sweetest fellowship is in his rejection? That when he is rejected and his truth is rejected, there's a fellowship in that. There's an intimacy in that that's unexplainable. But when you get alone with him and you cry it out in that rejection and he succors you, he succors you like a nurse. He comes up alongside you and says, I know they hated me too. They're going to hate you because of me. They're going to reject you. They're going to forsake you. There's going to be some that you thought was so faithful. They're going to walk away and betray you just like they did me. But I love you. We're together in this. Let's fellowship in this suffering. Let's fellowship in this rejection by the world. Oh, how beautiful. Praise be to God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I ask for Cynthia's mind to be cleared. The word of God just explode in her right now. Take authority over these lying devils. I agree with her right now for peace. God bring her through this testing. Give her strength. Amen. Hey, Aloy. We'll see you, friend. That's all right, friend. I'm glad to have you here. Come now, fount of every blessing, turn my heart to sing thy praise. Streams of mercy, 
Ready for a good burst, Cynthia? I'm going to give you a prophecy right now, Cynthia. Ready for prophecy? Jesus sought me with a stranger Wandering from the fold of God In a fold fresh one All to grace a greater than You ready, Cynthia? I got a prophecy for you, sis. This verse just exploded in my mind. Wait a minute. Let me give you this verse. This is your verse for the night. First Peter chapter five. Starts with verse six. Okay, I'm gonna read a couple verses for you. Write it down. Read it. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him. For he careth for you. For he careth for you. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil. As a roaring lion. Walketh about seeking. Whom he may devour. Whom resists steadfast in the faith. Knowing. That the same afflictions are accomplished. And your brethren that are in the world. And here's the kicker for you, Cynthia. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, see, this is what I'm talking about earlier. There's a suffering sometimes. There's a suffering because God is after something. After you have suffered a while, make you perfect. Establish, strengthen, and settle you. That's what he's after, sis. That's what he's bringing about. That's what you're going through right now. That's your word for the moment. He's going to establish you going to strengthen you he's going to settle you but you got to go through this a little bit of heat because his servant his handmaiden has to be fully purged fully tempered and fully ready for her mission trust him cast your cares upon him for he can for you Praise be to God.
That's right. You know what, Paul? You come to the right place, friend. I'm so glad you landed here. You're going to like it here. Well, Dave O's, it's, it's, it's may not be what you think it is, but it's good. It's good. Well, Michael, that's because of where they've been, friend. I mean, it's 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 all over the internet. Um, it's all over the internet because Satan has that that laid out everywhere. So there's all kinds of sites talking about blasphemy, blasphemy, blasphemy. And it's it's a teaching out there, Michael. That's got people messed up. Because they don't know what it is and they don't understand the concept. How do you deal with passing? With, well, I mean, it's never easy, uh, Priscilla. Um, you just, it's just one of the things you got to go through. You know, you got to get through it with, with, with the Lord. If you don't have the Lord, it's a very horrible experience, you know. All right, Davos. Yeah, it's not terrible, Davos. I'm not saying that. It's just, it's a, it's a little bit of a warning is what it is. And boy, I saw it clearly, bro. Saw it clearly. See, Paul says, um, all of what you were just saying, Pastor, I was going through, then, then I was alone. Had some wine, wanted to get the Jezebel girlfriend ended up with, had divorced and left, converted. But you know what, Paul? You know, the beautiful thing about God is he's in the restoration business, friend. I would say this, Priscilla, I mean, there's only one way to get through it, and that's through Jesus, you know, through prayer, staying close to God. I mean, you're going to go through emotional up and downs with it. But you know what? The Lord can get you through anything, can he? Stay focused on him. That's the main thing. Just keep your eyes turned upward. But no, there's no verses or... Uh, anything I could give you that's going to change the way you feel. Oh, it's a dream that it's a dream, uh, Cynthia of of um, Davos. Hey, Logan. Well, he shared it on here a couple of nights ago. Or maybe last night. I don't remember. He was in a, a house. Um, and he was in a house floating on a lake. Wind was blowing one toward the shore. And he had to Put down his anchor to stop it.
I have no idea, Doc, what you're talking about. Does anybody know what he's talking about? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Turn my heart to single rain. No, I do not, Doc. Does anybody else know what that is? It's probably some, probably set myself up here for something stupid, ain't I? Tess, you still asleep? No, I never was. All right, then you know what? We're not going to give them an opportunity, are we? Because you know what's coming next. Especially with a name like Duck is Daddy. You know what's coming next. So let's just go ahead and nip that in the bud. What is it, Michael? Michael probably looked it up. It is, it is, Logan, but it's not for everybody. It's, for, it's particularly for Dave uh, himself, a dream. Well, you know what? I'm at the five-hour mark. I think I'm going to get glad we got rid of that. I'm glad we got rid of that. Well, I kind of figured, Michael, it must have been some kind of setup. I must be buffering. Am I buffering? Can you see me? Am I still on here? It's working just fine for me. All right. Paul, listen. A lot of people have come into this chat in your condition. A lot of people have been helped through the encouragement and hope of the word and the hope of other people in here. So we do this every night, Paul. So please come back. We're going to pray for you. Paul, would you like me to pray for you now, friend? What's up, Shandy? What you talking about, sis? Turn my heart to sing thy grace.
Paul, did you subscribe, bro? Hit the notification button. All right, Dave, I'm going to pull the shades anyway, bro. So I'll talk to you tomorrow, okay? Maybe I'll send you that interpretation here a little bit. Got you, Paul. So you know it's possible to be restored. So that's good. Praise God for that. I believe that also happened to Yalitza. I believe. Same way. So when you two get restored, you're going to have quite a testimony. All right, friends. Well, you know what, Paul? Seven times worse, maybe 14 times worse this time. But you know what? That ain't no problem for God, is it? Ain't no problem. Your iniquities are not bigger than God. All right, I got you, Shandy. But you know what? You can't concern yourself with that, dear. You got your own soul to, to worry about right now. Right, Shandy, right. You're learning some stuff, sis. Well, Paul, you go down below the screen where it says, uh, do you see a little subscribe thing there below the screen? Do you see it? Be a little box, little. Down below the video screen. Yeah, you are, Paul, or uh, Shandy, you are being enlightened. Well, there's Nicholas. Oh, you don't see it? Where's it out on the phone, the, the subscribe thing, Nathan? It's right below the screen, isn't it? Yeah. What kind of phone do you have, Paul? Do you have an Android or an iPhone? I'm going to change it. Shouldn't, should it? He's probably got a high... The chat, yeah. To see that, mm -hmm. yeah, you got to hide the chat, Paul, to see that. You got, you got to X out of the like Kathleen's saying. You got to X out of the chat, and then you can see the subscribe button. All right, so make sure you click all after you press subscribe. Click all on those bells because there's there's all personalized and none. Make sure you click all. And anytime I come on, you'll be notified. At least it's supposed to. It doesn't always catch it. Sometimes you'll miss them. But check every night, Paul. We're usually on every night. I do miss occasionally, but not often. Lisa wasn't here very long, was she? Or unless she's just hanging in the shadows. God brought you right in here, Paul. This is exactly where you need to be. The best place you can be right now. What happened, Nick? 
Matt, Mr. Nick. Nick's our resident AIDS atheist. Yeah, I figured, Michael. God, God intervened, didn't he, friend? Didn't he? Yep. Oh, I believe you, friend. I believe you. Oh, I know what you're saying now, Michael. I said. Now I see it. I see it. Pretty clever, isn't it? You all see it? Okay. You know what? Why would I block you, Briella? Are you going to say something crazy? Usually, if come on, someone comes on and says, "Don't block me," I'm going to, I'm probably going to block you. What's up, Nicholas? I've been fatigued and nauseated, even though I got six hours of sleep. What do you think's going on, Nick? I'm not on there, no. You ain't been around anybody with the with the virus, have you, Nick? Right, Priscilla. Right. Right. Hard to tell, isn't it, Michael? Not always easy to tell. But I still have that feeling. Nick, you want me to pray for you? I pray for you, friend.
Well, Nicholas, it's like this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask God. And I'm going to agree with the people in this room. And in that agreement, God will answer our prayer. And we'll pray for your stomach. We'll ask him to touch your stomach. To calm the nausea. And give you some energy. Just like that. So what's going on with your brother, Briella? So what do you say, Nicholas? Okay, Nick, that's fine. So, Brielle, has he taken drugs or anything? Not, not, no drug-related situation? What was he doing at the time? Calm down, found every bliss. Well, guess what, Paul? You can be lured back in, out into the light, can't you? That's what I'm doing right now. I'm luring you back into the light. So has he had this problem before, Briella? No drugs? Uh, well, there's a, there's an open door, Briella, for demonic activity. Well, if he knows the Lord, he ought not be smoking pot, Briella. I, I would say that he he has an idea of God, but he doesn't know him. Yeah, his, he, he's got the doors open for demonic activity. Christians don't smoke pot, Briella. <clears throat> Well, I don't care what it is. <laughs> they still don't smoke it. I don't care what California says. I'm talking about what God says. But yeah, that's definitely his problem. Then needs to repent of that and um, give his heart to God, and the Lord will set him free. But no, I can't pray for him while he's smoking for smoking pot. But that's why you gotta know all the facts, folks, before you pray for people. <clears throat> well, it is Nicholas. It, it's 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 mentioned in the all-encompassing word pharma, pharmacia, which is sorcery. That means any mind-altering drug, potion. 
Yes, it is mentioned, not specifically, thou shall not smoke marijuana, but it's in the sorcery category, absolutely. Oh, you know, I did it when I was younger. I, I did it. I was I was being enlightened, you know. I was going into the demonic realm, didn't even know it. Enlightened. Come all philosophical, figured out the meaning of life and all that sort of thing. Opening up the doors to devils. Well, as I said, Brielle, then, then someone needs to get get converted, you know, give their heart to God, and he'll take care of that post-traumatic stress. He'll give you a sound mind, peaceful heart, all those sort of things. You know, God, God will eliminate those things. Yes, it is, Paul. Power of God, Briella, that's what he needs. He needs the power of God in his heart. God will bring peace to his mind. That's right, Priscilla. My heart to sing my grace, mercy ever leads, all songs of lofty praise. Jesus sought me with a stranger, wandering from the Lord of God. He too has me from danger, interpose his precious blood. No, Yusef, you shouldn't pray for everyone. Absolutely not. Well, for instance, okay, for instance, let's say you were a drunkard, Yusef. You were a drunkard. And you came up to me with a bottle of whiskey. And you said, please pray for me to be that I don't want this whiskey anymore. And you're chugging it. Okay. You're chugging it. Do you think I'm going to pray for you? Now, if you take that whiskey and you and you throw it away, you, you throw it in a trash can. You say, you know what? I want to be free of this. And I'm going to pray for you. You see, you can't pray for just everybody. Don't work like that. Prayer only goes out to those who are wanting the effects of it. Now I could pray for you. I could pray for you this way, you said. I could say, God, make that make him so miserable drinking that stuff that he's gonna want to cry out to you. He ain't gonna want to look to that anymore. He's gonna want to turn his heart to God. You can pray that sort of prayer for anybody. But specific prayers, you have to look at the reason behind them and the motivation behind them and what they're really wanting from that prayer. You have to trace it down. Prayer ain't cheap. You know, it's just not a bubblegum machine thing. It's a very, it's a very important thing. That's why I don't pray for everything I hear. I like to shake it down and find out what I'm praying for because it's... I'm asking God to do something. If I'm asking God to do something, I better know what I'm asking him to do, hadn't I? Otherwise, I'm a hypocrite. See, in that particular case, you know, what am I praying for? You see, for that person, that person needs to close the gates that they opened, and then you can pray for them.
You know, that's one thing. Let me just say this, because that brings up an interesting thing. People just throw prayer around in the church like it's just like it's literally like it's out of a bubble gum machine. But in the quarter, <laughs> open up the little thing. Oh, look, a prayer. You know, it's we just cheapen everything. And even Paul, the apostle said, lay hands on no man suddenly. Lay hands on no man suddenly. Well, you go right ahead, Yusuf. You go right ahead and pray. God is not going to justify any sin in anybody. He's not going to do it. He calls all men everywhere to repentance. Period. Yeah, as an odd. Yeah, that's kind of odd, isn't it, Michael? If there was a wall, and behind the wall there was a balloon, how do you know the wall, the balloon exists? Boy, I don't know, Nicholas. That's that's difficult. I'd say ask somebody on the other side. Me to rescue me from danger. Interpose this precious blood. Be back momentarily.
when I think about the Lord. Oh, I imagine. You did check for him. <laughs> yeah, he already told us the balloon was there. Well, that's what I'm saying, Nicholas. That's why you got to ask somebody else, right? So I could liken that to the gospel, all right? All right. All right. So we don't know what's on the other side of the Great Wall and the cosmos. So we ask, God, if you're real. God, if you're real. See, this was my prayer that night. I got saved, Nicholas. God, if you're real, I need you. And whammo, he come out from the other side of the wall and made himself known to me. And I saw that there was a God. Oh, thank you, dear. You want some of that? Yogurt. That's yogurt, by the way, Vanessa, if you're watching. Oh, you did, Bo? I didn't see it. I didn't know you were back, my friend. I don't see your question. All right, Kathleen. Love you, sis. Appreciate you. Missed you this week so far. He interposed his precious blood. Can you ask that question again, Sir Bo? All right, let me look. Nine minutes ago, 11.20. I don't see it, Bo. It must not have come through, brother. Yeah, I don't see it. Hello, Pastor. No, it didn't come through, Bo.
Nice try, Pastor Gabe. Nice try, video punk. <laughs> Bo says I was thinking about bitterness and frustration is there a difference did Jesus get angry with the disciples at times well that's a good question Bo you know bitterness is Bitterness is more of taking something to heart that was done against you, holding on to it. You know, anger turns to bitterness if it's unchecked, basically. Frustration, that's that's different. That's I wouldn't say that Jesus had frustration as much as he had um, disappointment. I would put it this way, Bo. I think Jesus was disappointed that humans couldn't see what was going on. For instance, at, at the tomb of Lazarus, when he read him, raised him from the dead. Story in the Bible when Jesus raised somebody from the dead, though. This man's name was Lazarus. Then it says when he came there, he'd been dead three days or four days. When he came there, he said that he wept when he got there because the people were saying, if you would have been here, he wouldn't have died. He says he wept. What I believe he was weeping at was the fact that they didn't believe it. They just didn't believe him. They didn't see who he was. And that was his frustration, if you want to call it that. But it was more of a disappointment. That's why he would say, oh, how long must I bear with you, you faithless generation? So he would say, you know, I'm doing all this to show you who I am, and you're still not willing to see it. And bitterness is more of a personal thing that you hold towards somebody. You see the difference? Hey, Zebso. What about when they fell asleep in the boat or in, in the tomb of in the, in the garden? He leaks his back. Oh, is she? Hello, Yelitsa. <laughs> well, if you, if you stay out for 12 hours, they're bound to show back up. <laughs> in and out about five times. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Zebso? Oh, in the garden. You know what? I believe he was he was experiencing there, Bo, as a human. You got to remember he was God in a human body. So he was experiencing much confusion and a lot of, you know, he didn't want he didn't want to bear that that suffering. I mean, as anybody would withdraw from that. Right. So he was experiencing the human the humanity of that. And he wanted their he wanted their undergirding. He wanted their support he wanted them you know to be there with him and they couldn't hang with him so he had to go alone and that's what that was all about you know he was he was disappointed in them again because they're they were just humanity and they were in the flesh they couldn't help him yeah i would call it that about more than more than a frustration, I guess.
So, Paul, let me warn you about Yelitsa. Yelitsa is our resident tire gauge. Okay. She's going to check all your tires, see how much air is in your tires, how you got there, how you got your flat tire, who fixed it for you, how did they fix it, how much did they charge you to fix it. And then she's going to try to repeat that. Basically, she's looking for a pattern. So if, if you, you know, if you feel annoyed by the 20 questions, that's what she's doing. You've already been told, Yulitsa, 25, 30 times. Well, she, when well, you and I were talking about it, she was gone, actually. Well, but she's been told before that she many, many, many times. Well, many times. It. It's all right. I'm going to get her tomorrow on the on the screen. Yeah, we're going to we'll, talk. We'll, help we'll talk. We'll, we'll talk help to her. tomorrow, Yulitsa. Well, I've been trying to tell you, you you're not going to find the pattern. Not gonna find it. No. Stop looking for a pattern. Don't bother. Even if you could find one, God would make sure it didn't work for you. Yeah, I know, Michael. I'm talking to the family.
Well, my point is that Elites has been told at least 20 times that Tess and I was in very bad condition without the spirit. And she keeps ignoring what I'm telling her and says, well, I just want to see if anybody got restored. I mean, she's been told and told and told. Now, if she don't believe it, how am I supposed to help her? If she keeps doubting what I'm saying, how can I help her? So, you know, it, it's just it's just getting redundant to the point where I've told her and told her to quit it and she won't quit it. Yeah, it's getting a little bit ridiculous, to be honest with you. You got to quit with this foolishness now. Yeah, it is. It's it's a spirit, is what it is. It's a spirit talking right through her. <clears throat> she thinks you have to feel it a certain way. If it then pops or it breaks away or whatever she's describing, that that's the only way you can lose it. But when you go back into sin, that's an obvious sign that you've lost the spirit you don't need a pop or 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 a some some wild feeling of some kind you 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 just know when you when you lose the virtues of the spirit and you go back in the flesh and you don't have peace joy love meekness temperance kindness all that stuff's not in your heart no more then you know you're in the flesh you don't have to have some dramatic pop or some supernatural thing that feels like stuff leaves your body you don't have to have all that. You fall away, you fall away. It's that simple. It don't have to be dramatic. You're away from God, Yulitsa. You've grieved the Holy Spirit. And the only way for you to get it back is to repent and turn from your sins and believe God again. It, it just doesn't need to be that complicated. You're going around here hunting all these breadcrumbs to get back to, you know, Hansel and, and, and Gretel, it was Hansel and Gretel? Yeah. Hansel and Gretel's house. Breadcrumbs ain't going to get you back there. Don't work like that. Well, here's the thing. When you come back, you can't base it on, you, you can't take your proof from finding another person that has the exact same experience that you're having because you're just basing it on that. It has to be based on God and God alone and his word, what he says about you, his truth. And do you believe he's who he says he is? Do you believe that he's able to restore you? Do, do you believe that he's an impartial judge, that he loves you and wants to restore you? You can't base it on what someone else tells you. You're elevating the, the, a testimony from a person over what God says in his word. He that comes to God must believe that he is God and he is all that he says he is, that he will do all that he says he will do, that he is not unfair, that he is just, and that he will restore you. And, and you, when you will find him when you seek him with all of your heart. You have to believe in that. You have to trust in that. You can't base it on what you're basing it on. It's a rabbit trail. Somebody else's testimony is not your savior. Exactly. Right. It's like you're finding, you're, you're trying to find the perfect testimony and then, okay, then I'll believe God. No, you got to believe God because you may find it, but, and still not have your breakthrough because of what you're trusting in. You still have to believe him at his word, not the word of people. Exactly. Does that make sense, Lisa? The gospel is not wholesale. You, you can't get it that way. I mean, testimonies are, are great. They're encouraging. You know, I talk to a lot of people and I share my testimony and they see that, yeah, God can restore. But it, it seems like you're a little too uh, dependent on that to, to try to convince you of something, to try to make you believe when you just simply need to believe God. 
I think you're a little, just maybe a little too um, obsessed with that, Yelitsa. And the real problem is your unbelief in God. Yes, the word does say that he will never leave you. Yeah. And he will never forsake you. Right. Doesn't say that you can't walk away. You leave him, he leaves you. Right. It's right there in the book. Well, this is what we were talking about earlier. You said, you know, you felt this sudden change when the spirit left your body. But I say that you grieved his spirit before that. And what you felt, that sudden dramatic change, was probably an evil spirit that entered into you. Not a, so much a sudden departure of God, but yet an instant taking on of something that is wicked. And that's why you had such a strong feeling at that time. Right. The drama there was the devil going in. Yes. Not right. the spirit going out. Right. So that's what you got to remember. The same with Lisa. You know, she had the same experience. She did, yes. She, the pop she had was a devil going in. Right. That's what it was. Wasn't, wasn't her spirit going nowhere. Should she believe she what, committed the unpardonable? If, you know, Yelitsa, if you really believed that you committed the unpardonable sin, if you truly believed that, you wouldn't be in the chat asking these questions, looking for hope in another person's testimony. So you really don't believe that. But what you're looking to is where you are making your mistake. Is that, me I mean... Let me explain something to you, Yelitsa. When you have an evil spirit in you, okay, you believe what that evil spirit believes. Right. That evil spirit has committed the unpardonable sin. Now, hear me out on this. It is in the state of perdition, irreparable loss. It cannot be redeemed. It is communicating that thought to you. And you are verbal, you are speaking it through the verbiage of your mouth. So you're confessing what that spirit believes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've committed an unpardonable sin. I've committed. That's exactly what that devil has done, see? Yes. And he's now superimposed himself through your mouth. That's what you're hearing. And the reason he keeps telling you that is so you don't believe in the hope of the gospel again. You're believing his report, basically. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how he departed. If the Holy Spirit departed immediately like that, it doesn't matter. What matters is that he left and you grieved him. You know, he right. left me slowly. Right. He, he, he really worked with me for a long time. But see, the blame is not gone. God's. It's not God's. You can't put the blame on him. Well, he left me. He left me. Well, if you've grieved him away, you've grieved him away. It's still your fault. You're trying to put the blame on him. Right. He didn't he didn't leave. You 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 grieved him away, you know.
course she can come back to God, but I mean, you can sit here all night and say, you can come back to God and she's still going to say, I've committed the unpardonable sin. I, you get nowhere with that. You know what I mean? Right. You don't get anywhere with that. Right. There you go, Paul. At some oh. point, she has to believe that it's possible to be restored. Yeah, you have to believe in the possibility. Yes. You can't get I, nowhere. I can't until... make you, and you're not going to gather. You're not going to gather faith based on hearing someone else's testimony. It's not going to come that way. It won't. Because you're putting your hope in that thing, Yalitza. It's a conscious choice. Conscious choice. To say, yes, I believe God can restore me. And nobody can force you. I don't care if they pull a gun on you. They can't force you into that. It's got to be a conscious decision on your part. Right. See, and what Lisa's feeling is the eternal creature. Right. That eternal entity that's in her. Mm -hmm. That's what she's feeling. Right. That's why she's lost time and all that. Exactly. She's right. feeling that perdition of yeah. that of that of that right. entity. Right. She understands that now. Hey, John. Well, Zepso, it, it's basically this. You know, we know that the Holy Spirit is needed for conversion. We know that the Holy Spirit's operation is to convict and convince us of, of righteousness, right? So if that is his, his, we'll say his job is to, is to bring you into the state of conviction and convert your soul through divine influence, the blasphemy of that would be whenever we say, well, that's not God. That's not God. We don't need that. You know, we're when you resist the Holy Spirit, meaning when you put your hand up to him and say, no, nah, I don't think I, I don't think I need that. That's blaspheming. That's saying I can do this on my own. You know, I can I can do this through my own religion because that's what Jesus was dealing with. See, with the Pharisees. They had their own form of religion, their own power to get in, so to speak. So when the Holy Spirit come and said, no, you got to come this way. You got to humble yourself, submit yourself to the gospel. They blaspheme by saying, nah, we don't need that. So whenever Stephen stood up in the book of Acts and said, ye uncircumcised in heart, you do always resist the Holy Ghost. They were blaspheming the Holy Spirit, the one who could convert their soul. So basically it's this, Zeb. So you finish out your life and never submit to the Holy Spirit, you can't be forgiven, you see. Because you didn't come through the cross. You didn't come through the way of the Holy Spirit. People say it's, you know, they think it's, well, you say tongues is of the devil or you say something along those lines. That's not what it is. It's when you resist that which converts you. 
up until you die in your own sins and you never submit to the gospel, then you have blasphemed God. That makes sense. It's going to be a good time to call you tomorrow, Elitza. So where have you been tonight, John? Have you run into any adventures? on the internet You know what, Wick? I'm sorry you feel so bad about snow, friend. Do you need me to send you a bus ticket to Florida or something? Oh, absolutely, Paul. I believe that, too. 100%. That's what I'm dealing with. That's why I can't talk to her reasonably, because I'm talking to that spirit. I know that. <clears throat> Hoping to cast it out of there, friend. That's why I want to do a face-to-face -face with her. Where'd you go, John? Well, we're talking about something bigger than that, Yulitsa. We're talking about a spirit that keeps lying to you. You got a lying spirit. Same same kind of spirit Lisa's got. Same kind. Shimonian and Revere. Shimonian. I've never heard of the Shimonian, John. Did you did you run into any uh, rooters tonight? Praise God. Word of God is quick, powerful, sharp. Are you wanting something? I
How many was you, how many was you up against, John? Thank you. All right, Wet Wick. Chief Red. All of them. <laughs> They didn't kick you off, huh? It's pulling him like Stretch Armstrong, Michael. You remember Stretch Armstrong? Some of you are probably too young for that. Well, the Holy Spirit will leave you, Paul. That's actually not correct. Oh, that's, that's not what we teach in here. Maybe you meant to word that a little bit different. But yeah, he will leave you. If if you leave him, he'll leave you. Yes, absolutely. I don't know if I can get up to you, Upper Escalon. Well, absolutely, Paul. Absolutely, you will. You're running from a dog? Why, why are you worried about that? Why You're in a truck, aren't you? Yep. Is it a Tonka truck, Upper Escalon? You sure it's not a dog man? You sure it's not a dog man chasing you? Praise God, Zepso. Hey, Sean. Yeah, I'm about ready to get off here, Sean. That's not a record now. Test, test did seven hours the other night. I did nine hours the first night I was on here, Sean. I don't know why I've been on here so long. I just, there's a lot of people coming and going, bro. Yeah. Oh, wow, John. How long did you have to stay up there? That's horrible.
Well, you had to sit up on that ladder a few hours, John. There's no way I could do it. Yeah, there you go, Michael. I don't know how you did that, John. There's just no way I could do that. I'd have, I'd have to come down and take my chances, I think, because I couldn't sit up there. <laughs> That's horrible. So was was the dog like was he um, at the foot of the ladder like barking at you like ferociously or what? Did you try to come down at all and see how he'd react? I got you. So you didn't have your cell phone where you could call somebody then. That's awful, John. Poor guy. Yeah, you ain't gonna do much with that. Yeah, I wasn't going to a good place, Michael. Wasn't going to a good place. You was you left five hours ago. I've been sitting here ever since you left, my uh, Sean O'Connor. That's unbelievable. Hey, Chris, wild man, Chris. <laughs> you've been trapped on a, you've been trapped on a ladder twice on huh, John, once by a dog and once by a man. <laughs> That's something else.
All right, Bo. See you tomorrow, friend. Hey, Allure, what's up? Yes, Shalitza, you're in the right place, sis. You're in the right place. Good night, Bo. Or maybe daytime over there. Maybe we talk in a couple of days, next couple of days, Bo. You can be into that. Elites, are we going to talk tomorrow like we talked about? Are we going to talk tomorrow? Elites, are we going to talk tomorrow? Again, I say. Okay, then why don't we do it? You tell me. All right. <laughs> I 
Zoom is fine, Yolita. We can do that. It doesn't matter to me. We'll say noon. When noon. High noon Eastern Standard. What is what time is it where you're at right now? We'll say twelve hours from now then, huh? Harvester, where's the candle that was here? Yes, I do know how to do Zoom, Elites. It's pretty simple. Yeah, just Google it, it'll explain everything to you. I'll save that for tomorrow, Michael. Uh, that's too much to get into tonight, you know. After six and a half hours.
Hey, Logan, I just get right closer down, buddy. <clears throat> really, Dave Oves. Lord, protect my brother. Don't let any harm come to him. Overshadow him with your power, Lord. Paul, I hope to see you tomorrow, friend. There's much encouragement in this room. Can you come back and spend time with us. And um, you'll be encouraged. <clears throat> Good night, Dave. Hello, Logan. Much love. Much love to you, Logan. Michael. Paul. Good to have you, friend. Whoever else is watching this late hour. Songbird. Good night, Songbird. We love y'all. Good night. Good night. See you next time.